Hey you guys, how are you? It's Brandy. Obviously, it's my channel. If you don't like conviction, if you do not like coming out of your deceived, deluded perception of the world around you, spirits that you may be dealing with, or maybe you just don't want to accept that you may have spirits at all and that you may be in need of deliverance, I would strongly advise you to just turn off this video because everything is about to get exposed. I'm about to expose dreadlocks. And um, maybe a little bit about marine spirits and um, just a couple other things. But uh, the Lord uh, recently convicted me on dreadlocks because I was going to get them. As y'all know, I kind of posted like a little snippet of a video saying that I was going to, um, I was looking for a loctician to do my locks. And um, pretty much over the course of three days, the Lord has been dealing with me about it. And he finally led me to tons of information that was very overwhelming for me and that was hard for me to accept along with a, a couple other things but um I want to encourage you to stay so you can listen that you can learn you know if you have dreadlocks I would strongly advise you to cut them off and if you don't and you know someone who does have dreadlocks or maybe you just want the knowledge and the information so that you can share it with other people I want to encourage you to stay for that reason but um I mean, if you don't like truth and you just don't like exposure, then you're not going to like this. So for that reason, I would say just turn off the video. <laughs> okay, so before we start, um, I bind any demonic spirits that are within any individual that may be listening to this video or watching this video. If you are binding this person's will and you're blinding their mind from receiving the truth or understanding the truth or even being receptive to the truth i bind you right now in the name of jesus and i command you to lose that person so that the light of the glorious gospel and the light of jesus christ and just his knowledge may shine in, into this person's heart into their minds so that they can receive the truth and understand it as well so now that your minds are open and you're willing to listen amen after saying that i felt something break off of me wow <laughs> I'm still, um, I was reading Prepare for War today, which, um, there was a passage in Prepare for War the Lord actually used, uh, to convict me on dreadlocks, and, um, I'm still learning how to, like, bind, um, she talks about how when you're trying to preach the gospel to people or share, you know, revelation knowledge or something with those people, you have to, um, bind the demons that may be binding or blinding their will and their mind from understanding the gospel or even being open um to receiving the gospel so that's why i was kind of like you know stuttering i guess i'm still learning anywho so i recently decided i'm gonna say about maybe five days to a week ago that i wanted to get starter locks or dreadlocks whatever whatever you want to call it in the beginning, um, I said I would never, ever, ever, ever get dreadlocks because I'm just too versatile with my hair. Um, Y'all can see from my older videos, I changed my hair color a lot. Um, I just I just couldn't see myself committing to a hairstyle where you literally could do nothing to it and you get dreadlocks. Obviously, that's permanent. So, um, like in the past, I was like, heck no, I would never get that. But lately, I've just been really frustrated with my hair. Um... Nothing's wrong with my hair. I guess it's just having loose natural hair. It's a lot of it's a lot of maintenance that needs to be done, and you have to have a lot of patience to deal with natural hair. You know, people see black women who are starting to embrace their natural hair texture and their real hair. You know, not the Negro pean um, matrix minded women who still relax their hair. No shade to you if you do, but that's just what it is. It's Negro pean. Um, and, you know, you look at us and you see, like, oh, my God, their curl pattern is just so beautiful. They have, you know, gorgeous coils. And, man, their hair is so thick. I want my hair to be that long. And people big chop and they chop all their hair off because they want to get that hair like that natural woman. And um, on the onset, it, it is very beautiful hair, you know, but it's a lot that goes into it as well. My hair is not even that long and I, I get frustrated with it. Number one, I never really properly learned how to take care of natural hair. The only thing I put in my hair, which isn't bad, um, I wash it. I have done co-washing a couple times, but I personally just think co-washing is disgusting because if your hair is dirty, you need to freaking clean it. A conditioner is not gonna clean your hair. 
I don't even think a cleansing conditioner can clean your hair, really. I mean, whatever floats your boat. I personally, I would just like a gentle shampoo. I, so I shampoo my hair. I use coconut oil and um, castor oil for hair growth. But most, like I have coconut oil in my hair right now. No conditioner, just, just coconut oil. I put coconut oil in my hair and um depending on it if like if I if I'm going out somewhere, I really don't go anywhere at all. But if I'm like going to the store, I need to go out, um, I typically wear my afro anyway. I don't do all the fancy styles, I don't do braid outs, I don't do twist outs, I don't I don't do all of that. Because like I said, I don't like dealing <laughs> with my hair. I don't care for all of that. I'll just throw like a leave in condition uh conditioner from Cantu, um the Cantu uh, line, the leave-in conditioner or the repair cream, I throw that in there and it moisturizes the hair and it um, softens it and, you know, just wettens it up a little bit or I'll mix some olive oil mixed with some water in there. Or um, I think there's some, some orange or tan hair mayonnaise that they have too. I'll put that in my hair. And I also have um, hair moisturizer from the Cantu line as well. I really don't do anything in my hair. Um, so my hair is not... Um, it's not damaged. My thing is, I just don't care to really comb and detangle. And it's disgusting because every time I put my hands in my hair, I don't know if this is just due to maybe I don't have, an, I don't have enough vitamins in my blood to just really have healthy, healthy hair. Um, but I have shedding. I'm tired of that. It's disgusting to me. Whether I'm picking it, I, I'm really like... I'm antsy about stuff like that. I don't like seeing hair in combs and in brushes and stuff. It just It's just disgusting to me. Even though I know that it's natural for hair to shed, it really is just gross to me. I don't want to, I don't want hair strands coming out of my hand every time I, you know, put my hand in my head to wet it a little bit. Or when I'm washing it and I'm separating it, it's just shed. Like, that's just disgusting to me and I just don't like it. So when it comes to natural hair and just really caring for it, I don't care for it. The most I will care for my hair is when I wash it, I will put some conditioner in it and some coconut oil and chill. Or if I really don't feel like doing crap with it since I really don't go anywhere anyway, I will just put some little twists in it and I'll rock a bandana, which y'all can see from my videos. Most of the time my hair is wrapped because I don't do crap to it. I don't have the time and the patience to deal with natural hair the way all these youtube gurus deal with natural hair okay they got time for that that's good for them i ain't got time for that i don't so i decided recently well i'm just gonna get go ahead and get locks and um just out of sheer laziness really um i thought it was a very um sufficient hairstyle you know it's still your hair and especially since the lord convicted me on weaves the lord does not want his children wearing hair weave or extensions so that goes away the wigs no wigs I showed y'all the dream that he gave me I did a video on the dream that he gave me about the wig um, no wigs no hair weave no synthetic hair no box braids none of that um, the Lord actually told me two years ago to stop relaxing my hair which is why I do embrace my natural hair now so I cannot relax my hair and even if I could I would never go back to a perm because I just don't have time to keep putting chemicals that are going to burn my scalp in my head almost every three weeks or every month. I don't, this, this money, I don't have time for it. I don't care for it. And it's just uncomfortable period. I don't think any black woman should have to go through that. Um, I got my first perm when I was about four years old. Um, so, you know, most black women, we do just kind of grow up with relaxed hair because your mama or somebody relax your hair and I'm glad I don't relax my hair anymore because I just don't like my scalp being burned I think it's a horrible process it's stupid it's redundant and it's pointless and like I said I don't want to be negro peeing anyway straight hair is pretty but it's not my hair this is my hair so no relaxer no weave no anything the Lord just pretty much cut everything off for me and um so I was like well you know I was like well dreadlocks seem like the way to go i mean still your hair it's your hair that's growing long it's natural the only thing is it's in a long-term protective style you know it's just being matted or you know dreaded and i don't really care to do anything with my hair anyway so i set out in my heart i said i'm going to get dreadlocks that's it 
this is the answer all to my problems. And this is the reason why a lot of natural women with loose hair, loose natural hair, uh, choose dreadlocks because they're just tired of the crap. So all you sisters out there who are not black, I'm not going to say African American, I just don't like details like that. For those of you who are Caucasian out there, you Indian or Asian, pretty much not us, you are so blessed to have the hair that you have. Don't get me wrong, I do love black hair. I love how thick it is, I love the coils, I love everything about it. It's a very exotic hairstyle. There's nobody else on this planet that has hair like us. I love it for that reason, but it's just too much. You white people, y'all can wake up and just, honey, sweat flat iron, comb it, bro, you can do what you want to do. You didn't really take that much. This is annoying, okay? I guess everybody got their own hair problems, every race, but I thought dreadlocks was the answer all. And, um, I'm trying to figure out, even though this was just three days ago, I'm trying to remember what it was exactly. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> The Lord gave me a dream about them, just like he did with the wig. He saw that his daughter <laughs> had set out in her heart to get dreadlocks. And, you know, like the papa that he is, you know, he checks upon his kids and he's always watching. Even though we feel like God is far away or he's not paying attention to us or he's not listening, that is far from the truth because he is paying attention and he searches your heart daily. So he obviously saw that I wanted to get the locks and he gave me a dream about them. And in the dream, um, I'm not even going to say the whole dream. I'll just say the important parts. Basically, I was, it felt like I was in Galveston, although I was visiting a brother in Christ and he does not live in Galveston. But we went to um, a lobby area of some sort. I thought maybe it was like a massaging lobby or something in the dream. And we were just sitting there. And he had dreadlocks in the dream. He does not have dreadlocks in real life. And there was somebody else there with us. Can't remember who it was. It was a relative of mine. And I'm just sitting there. And um, I think I asked uh, what we were just sitting there for. What are we waiting for? And he said, oh, this is the lady who's going to do our locks. I guess she was going to touch his up and she was going to do mine. And because in real life, I really did want locks. I was excited in the dream. I'm like, oh, okay. I said, yes. Oh, my God. I'm excited. You know. So the lady comes out of the door. I don't I don't know in the dream if she was the lady who was supposed to do the locks or if she was somebody who was representing the lady and said that she was not there to do them. But what she did was she said that um she would not be able to do them, but she was going to reference us to somewhere else. Mind you, this is connected to us getting locks. And she specifically said in the dream that she was going to reference or send us to a spiritual advisor or a counselor of some sort. And I remember thinking, um, I mean, at that point, because it was a very vivid dream, it wasn't, um, it was very spiritual. So I kind of already knew subconsciously why are, why is me getting locks connected to you sending me to some spiritual counselor or some spiritual source? Like, what does that have to do with anything? You know, I just wanted my hair locked. And um, I remember thinking in the dream when she said it, I don't care to go to no spiritual lock counselor or no uh, spiritual advice. I don't, she ain't spiritual nothing. If she ain't saved, she ain't got nothing spiritual to offer me. That's just what I thought. But we went through the door anyway. And as soon as we walked out the door, um, we walked out onto an island or a beach. It looked like an island. I want to say island, but it was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful beach. And you guys, I kid you not, this experience and this dream, it was so profound. I knew exact. I knew that right when I walked onto that beach that um, it was a spiritual realm. I knew that this was not a place for humans because it felt a hundred times more real than this realm does. Um, if you watch hell or any heaven testimonies, the people will always tell you that um, the spirit realm feels like a lot more real than this one does. And that's exactly what I felt. I knew that when I walked onto that, that land or that island or beach or whatever it was that not that I wasn't supposed to be there. I just felt that this is a place for spirits. It's, it's a place because it was just too, it was too, um, it was very exaggerated. It, it, it felt like it was a spirit realm, you know. 
um, the wind, whatever the, the wind was blowing. You know how when you're on a beach, um, in this room, the, the wind blows on your skin. Well, it felt like the wind was blowing right through me. It was penetrating me. Every fiber of my being, that's what I felt. And um, I felt so liberated. And the, just the colors, it's col I'm not going to say it's colors I've never seen, but I would say the colors are very vivid. Uh, for it to be a beach, um, it looked like, honestly, it looked like a paradise. I'm not going to lie to you. It was very spiritual. And um, I even thought for a second, and what, in the dream, I thought to myself, wow, this is so beautiful. I wonder if this is what heaven looks like when we die. I wonder if this is like a portion of what the Lord may have prepared for us because it felt too real. Everything was alive. The water was alive. The sand was alive. The The wind was alive. If there was not one thing when I walked out that door on that island or that, uh, that beach. There was not one thing that was not alive and breathing. And it was all a part of the same system. The wind, the water, the, the sea, the sand, whatever, everything, the colors, they were all connected and they were all one. It was a living, breathing organism. Not like what we see today if we were to go to Hawaii or something or go to, I don't know, the Caribbean. or I mean, it was very vivid. And when I was experiencing it, I knew that, I don't know if I was in my raw spirit form experiencing that. I don't know. I can't, I can't really can't explain it to you. The Lord is still teaching me about a lot of stuff right now, but I felt that. And I was so comfortable in the dream that I started removing my clothing. I think I had a shirt and a bra on. I took it off. It was a place where you literally just felt free. Nobody was really looking at you in a perverted way. It just was. It felt that free. It's like your mind wasn't really even focused on stuff like that. I don't want to say, um, <sighs> if I had to put it into words logically, I would say that it did seem like there weren't any, any like defiling consciousness or anything. Like nobody was really focused on that. That's how beautiful the place was. It was just amazing. It was truly <laughs> amazing. I don't know why I had that dream. I don't know what I was doing there, but I felt it definitely was a spirit realm it was some it was a place in the spirit it was not nothing natural here because it wasn't a natural feeling everything was alive and everything was real and i do believe that uh, once we die once we go to be with the father and once we go home um i don't think that dream represented jesus i think it was from the lord because obviously he was exposing something to me but um you have to understand that even, you know, witches and warlocks and people who are really in the occult, there's people who talk about the water kingdom and stuff, and they tell you there's a kingdom under the sea. Um, the spirit realm period feels a lot more real than this one does, because essentially we are spirit beings, okay? We're just in flesh, so it's not a coincidence that when I, when I was there, I felt that everything was just going through me. I felt like it was all connected. I was connected to it, you know? Um, I do believe that it's going to be the way we go home. I got a taste of it, and it's, it's beautiful. It really is truly beautiful. It's a great feeling. No worries, no pain. Um, and I'm just explaining to you what I felt my spirit for. I'm not in any way, shape, or form saying that this was a representation of heaven at all. I'm not saying that. But just being in the spirit and feeling that is beautiful. So we have a lot to look forward to when we do go home. So you stay abiding in the Holy Spirit, following him. Um... Keep yourself consecrated and just uh, continue abiding in Jesus because it truly is it's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful thing. And um, everything is connected. When, you know, the streets of gold, the way the Bible describes, you know, our home in the book of Revelation, it's, it's truly beautiful. And when you go home, you're going to be one with the Father. It's, everything's going to be connected. There's not one thing that's not going to be alive. Everything is going to have its own personality. Trees, water animals everything even your brothers and sisters in christ everything will be connected and you will feel it i can't explain it any better than that you would have to experience it for yourself but anywho so my brother in christ and his relative in the dream everything was so beautiful i wanted them to go i wanted somebody to go get my camera for me so i could record it and put it on youtube that's how i know when i'm in the spirit and i'm not just dreamy because Nine times out of ten in the dream, I'm trying to record something for y'all in the dream. <laughs> I'm so serious. Like, I be thinking about y'all. Like, oh, my God, I have to record this. This is absolutely beautiful. It was like a utopia. I'm not, I kid you not. It was like paradise. It was beautiful. And um, 
of course we know Satan can make things look beautiful. But um, I was angry at him because they weren't listening to me. They didn't. They weren't going to get the camera for me. I think they were just underwater swimming. And um, two things I remember. One thing I thought was really, really odd um, was that when they were under the water, I remember my brother in Christ, he was face down in the water. And so was my relative. They were like swimming together. And um, I didn't really think about it too much when I was experiencing that in the dream. But when I woke up, I was like, that is odd that they were just face down in the water as if they could breathe like that. Um, they were just kind of floating under there, you know? It was almost as if they were indirectly inviting me to come in the water with them. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't focus on it like that. I wasn't trying to get in the water like that anyway. But um, the second thing was that the water was very, very clear. It was beautiful. Everything was beautiful. I mean... Which I think in reality, everything may be that beautiful in the spirit, but that doesn't change the fact that you're probably still serving Satan. You're still in the spirit realm. The spirit realm is beautiful, depending on um what <laughs> area of I look. That doesn't change anything. But um the water was so clear that I could still see the color of their skin and the way they looked outside the water. So the water was very transparent. I just thought it was odd how they were face down like that, floating. And, um, so anyway, long story short, I woke up from that dream and immediately the Holy Spirit was, um, you know how he does with us, for those of you who are close to the Lord, um, how the Holy Spirit just bears witness in your spirit that something is just not right, or he's trying to expose something to you. Maybe your mind hasn't really captured it just yet. But upon waking up, I knew immediately that something was just off about how me getting locks was connected to this woman, whoever this woman was. I don't, I don't know if she was an islander. She looked like one of them people. She had dreads. Was connected to her sending me to another spiritual source. And once she sent me to the spiritual counselor, which we never met a counselor, what actually happened was we went to a beach or an island type thing. And um, I, I was I spent like two days like just really thinking like what could that mean? And I knew deep down within me that God was trying to expose something about dreadlocks to me. I just couldn't put all the images together. I, I couldn't connect what He was showing me. Like what exactly are you trying to show me? Um, I did talk to Sister Mel about the dream, and me and Mel pretty much bore witness that most likely it was marine spirit. You know, because what I experienced was very spiritual. That's not I've never experienced anything like that. Um, it was very very vivid. And, um, so I was like, okay, obviously we got that part down, but I knew the Lord was just showing me, you know, like, why, why would God put that in a dream? Like, um, me wanting dreadlocks, what does that have to do with spirituality? You know, now I did subscribe to a lot of, um, a lot of YouTube gurus who have dreadlocks, you know, they do the little tutorials and stuff. And I did notice which convicted me subconsciously. Subconscious uh, conviction is when um, I, I think your subconscious bears witness to it's, it's a lot more aware and alert than uh, I'm not I'm not sure what we probably usually use in our minds because that's the uh, that's what you kind of push back that you don't really want to see you kind of try to suppress it or try to ignore it but I did notice how these women they all were really into this brother sister black power egyptian you know everybody who had dreads it was like they were all connected or just really conformed to that whole vibe you know and i thought it was a little odd you know i, I used to admire it a little bit because i was like well i thought it was a nice fashion it's a nice style you know but um i personally wasn't trying to really get into that um per se i just wanted my locks done to me it's just hair i just want a hairstyle to where i won't have to deal with this afro but um, I did notice that, and um, I guess the Lord didn't really wasn't really like cultivating that much at that point. But I, I did notice that subconsciously. So speaking of YouTube um, gurus, there was this one lady who had locks that I used to follow. I'm not gonna say her name just to respect her, but I fell in love with that woman's locks from day one and this was way before i even decided to get dreadlocks i was following her on instagram and um locks are beautiful 
I mean, you know, most people with dreadlocks, dreadlocks are not for everybody. Uh, they look really dirty um, on most people. They look really ratchet. A lot of people don't take care of their locks. They don't care to have them really neat and uniform, but her were really neat, smooth, long flowing, beautiful locks. And like, I've been considering getting them from the day that I saw her locks. And she was always my inspiration and motivation to get them. But, um, so basically I just kind of started, you know, watching a whole bunch of lock videos. And this is the, over the course of like the last two days, really last two or three days, subscribing to all these girls with locks and, uh, wasn't really on this, actually deleted my Instagram. So I wasn't really following people on Instagram, but I was just really drawn. And, and I think that's mostly what it was. I just kind of, um. I felt a stir. This is very important for y'all. Like I said, I'm going to talk a little bit about marine spirits because the Lord, um, I don't know a lot about marine spirits, which are mermaid spirits. Uh, those are demons and um, they're they're connected to the water kingdom. Uh, if you watch a lot of ex-Satanist testimonies, like uh, people who are African or they're from the islands and they're Christians now and they used to be into the occult, they will tell you about the water kingdom. And um, I didn't really know anything about marine spirits. I'm actually just now learning about marine spirits and what they are and how they operate. And they're actually connected. Uh, they are spirit husbands and spirit wives. They can stop you from getting married. They can uh, ruin your marriage. They can um, they can stop you from getting pregnant. So it's, so it's a lot of stuff that's just connected to that. And um, I did go through a deliverance session last year with a lady um, and she did tell me that I had a marine spirit, but because the Lord never really taught me about that, I didn't know what she was talking about, but she was definitely on point with everything else she discerned. Uh, for the most part, the Holy Spirit does reveal to me what spirits I deal with. So as soon as I got on Skype with that lady, she just started naming spirits and I'm just like, well, she's dead on. But, um, that always did stick with me how she said I had a marine spirit. I didn't know what it was, so I didn't really think too much about it. Um, my my take with things like that is I feel like if the Holy Spirit wants me to know about it, then eventually he'll teach me, which is what he's doing right now. I never really looked into that because it just sounded really freaking weird to me. <laughs> so um, what I found odd about me following that woman, she is very, very beautiful and her locks are very, very beautiful. But I just thought it was very weird how there was a, there's just a strange stirring within me. It almost felt like, um, you know how people say demons, spirits recognize each other? I really feel like that's what it was with me and that woman. It was something behind or beyond the surface, I will say, that was drawing me to just want dreadlocks. And um, It wasn't just her. She was the main one that was really inspiring me to get them because they just looked that beautiful on her. But now I know that the Holy Spirit revealed um, she has a demonic enhancement. We're going to get into that a little bit later, but... Just all the women that I was subscribing to on YouTube, I was just really drawn. Um, I know y'all have experienced that before, and I know y'all don't know a lot about demons. That's why I have to share this with you. Everything the Lord teaches me is my responsibility to share it. But um, the best way I can describe it so y'all can know and identify it, if you have ever felt this, it feels like you're... You know how you bear witness with a Christian? Maybe how y'all may bear witness in your spirit with me. Or the Holy Spirit will stir up your spirit. Um, you can have demonic spirits within you that can bear witness with that same spirit in someone else. And that's what I felt. Anytime I would look at that woman's pictures or just um, at anybody else's locks, it was just something within me. It literally just felt like a stirring, like, um, like a beaming light almost. Like, oh my God, I want that. I want those locks. Like, oh my God, she's beautiful. I have to have that, you know. And um, I didn't know any better. Obviously, I was ignorant, which is why I have to share this with y'all. I just thought it was me just admiring her locks. I was like, man, she's really, really pretty. I love her hair. Like, I want that. But I did feel that stirring. And um, I knew that it was spiritual. I just, um, I just didn't, I don't know. You know, you just don't really pay much attention to it. especially if it's something the Lord didn't really teach you about just yet. You kind of just kind of, it's like you notice it. And you feel that, but to you, it just may be you are really just drawn to that particular thing or that particular person. So that's what I was experiencing with her and um, other girls who had locks. And um, I still had that dream in my subconscious, still in the back of my head and um, 
kind of bearing witness on on a level to where like I was still trying to suppress what the Lord was trying to show me. Like obviously, Brandy, there's something there. Um, the Lord gave me a dream about it. Locks somehow are connected to something spiritual, and I was trying to suppress it, even though the Lord didn't tell me full throttle what it was just yet. I knew that there was something there with that, and um, I'm trying to remember. So this is how many days? This is, that was like two or three days ago. So maybe two days ago. Um, I guess the next. The next thing was just me finding a loctician, and that's when I made the video for y'all. Or maybe I did it after. I was really just digging for a loctician. Like, I started Googling, like, locticians in Houston and Dallas. Like, oh my god. I have to find somebody to hurry up and put these locks in my head. Like, I was just so, like, oh my god, I have to get this. And, um... One of you suggested Damian Walter. I was actually already watching Damian's videos. Um, if y'all don't know who Damian Walter is, he is a loctician. Uh, he's in Houston, and he's pretty he's pretty popular online, um, YouTube mostly. He makes videos, and I was already looking at his videos, and I just saw what a great work he did with Starter Locks, and um, he was going to be my first um, try, but my spirit just naturally cut Damien off because if you watch Damien's videos, he's very profane. He cusses a lot. Um, he's clearly a heathen. I'm not saying that to be ugly. I mean, that's just the truth. He's, he's a heathen. He's a heathen man. Cusses. He mocks the Lord a lot. He always makes jokes about God. He's clearly not saved, so I don't think you should be doing that. Um, he clearly is homosexual. He has a homosexual spirit on him. And when he's doing his client's hair, what he does is he records videos about the person's hair, completely insulting them. Make, I mean, it's just very unprofessional. I mean, he does it for jokes and laughs. And a lot of his subscribers on YouTube, you know, they they applaud that. I don't know why you would applaud that. And I was really wondering, like, um, does he ask permission from these people to talk about their hair like that before he records it and puts it on YouTube. I don't know. But um he just really belittles and degrades and undermines his client's hair. I mean, he doesn't say it to your face, and maybe he does. If he does, he'll say it sarcastically in a way where you know you may laugh it off. But um in Damien's videos he he just degrades those people so bad. If he doesn't like your hair color when you come in, you wouldn't even know it. But you would know after you watch, after you leave his uh, salon or his shop and you get on his channel. And he's talking about, oh, her hair was just this, this, and that, this big, blah, 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 you know. So I naturally just cut Damien off uh, just in my spirit. Before the Lord even started revealing all of this deep stuff to me, I was like, I'm not going to that guy. I don't want to go to a place where I'm going to feel uncomfortable or feel like I have to be a certain way because this guy's going to get on camera and then just like pretty much shred me to pieces, <laughs> you know. So, um, and plus, I, I just discerned a lot of uh, defile, a defilement about that guy. Um, some people you can just look at and tell they have defiling spirits on them. And I was like, I definitely don't want his hands in my head because the word says to lay hands suddenly on no man. Uh, there's a lot of transferring of spirits that can come through somebody touching you like that. And I don't have time. I've been in the process of deliverance for years. The Lord has been purging me as he does all of his children. I don't want any spirits coming back in. I definitely don't want none that's on you. Um, there's some Damien's videos where I've personally seen that he looks tormented in the face. You can tell that he's fighting and struggling with something. And he's putting his hands and all on people's heads. They, they're not saved. They have no discernment. Um, they just want their locks done and they run to Damien. Now, he is a great loctician. I've seen his work on his videos. It's very, very beautiful. But spiritually speaking... Um, heck no. Nope, nope, nope. So, um, and that was the Holy Spirit saying no too. Just nope, nope, no. Just everything about it was just no. So, um, I was looking for other locticians, like still looking like, okay, well, I drive to Houston often. So let me see if I can find somebody in Houston, blah, blah, blah. And, um, what it was for the most part was I, I noticed how spiritually drawn I was to them. That that's what that was was what was very awkward to me was um why are you so why is something stirred up within you to just want them that bad? That's very unnatural. If any of you have ever experienced that, that's not normal. It's not just you. Um, and it may, may not even just always be drawn to hair. It could be anything. 
if you feel that within you, like something within your spirit is, is drawn up and stirred up and you're just really attracted or drawn to something specific or maybe someone specific, nine times out of 10, that is a demon. That is a demon spirit. So that's what it was for the most part for me. And um, the Lord started kind of convicting my spirit on that. You know, like, why are you so adamant about getting it that bad? If it's really just hair and you just want locks, why are you idolizing all these women and all these women's hair that bad if you just want locks? And um, I stayed, I spent like the last two days on my phone all day looking at lock videos. I'm serious. Looking at lock videos, I was just really intrigued by it. I wanted those locks. I mean, looking at the women on Instagram, like, I'm like, oh, my God, I want my hair to look like that, you know. And um, next part, being intrigued. Mostly what it was, it was like the more that I was being drawn to it that way, it was like the more the Holy Spirit kept bringing that, that dream that the Lord gave me up into my spirit, you know. Obviously, there's something wrong with dreadlocks. And I was trying to fight it. You know, you know how the Holy Spirit do with y'all, how um, he's just really bearing witness in your spirit and he just will not leave you alone. It's like a beaming light going on inside, you know, and he's like, look at this. Research this. Look this up. And um, I started Googling the history of dreadlocks. And so far what I got in was trying to ignore it because I guess in my mind I still just wanted to believe that it's just locks you know it's still natural hair um even though the origin may have some weird you know something something that's what I was doing so I saw that um there's like so many split up different spiritual beliefs and religions connected to dreadlocks one of them is Egyptian one of them is Egyptian which uh I want to say the Rastafarians are kind of sort of connected to the Egyptians because if you look at a lot of black women that have locks on YouTube, you will see that, I can't even explain it, they have that Egyptian vibe about them. You could, they'll either have the little sign, you know, the Ankh, I'm going to get into that later because I didn't discover it until after this, but um, they're just really like, uh, they call themselves queens, you know. I, I noticed that about the, the videos I was watching, the women who had locks were just like, oh, oh, queens, wear your crown. I love to see more queens represent their crown and their locks. And I'm just like, okay, like, what is that? Like, well, what, what is all the extra for? You know, like, with the queens and the kings on, because you have dreadlocks, you're a king and a queen. I, I, I don't get it. You know, I'm all for people embracing their natural hair, but I just thought that was very odd. And, um, one lady in particular, I noticed that um, she she was a loctician or a lock specialist. And I noticed that in her comments, when she would greet her subscribers, she would say hotep. I'm like, what the, what the heck is that? What's a, what's a hotep? Is that like a, a, a Q-tip? Like, I was like, hotep. And I knew and it just sounded Egyptian. I'm like, why is it that all of these people who have locks, they're all like into this weird Egyptian some of them are like Rastafarian, you know, they're into that aspect of it, you know, but they're just really into like this black, it seems like there's some black movement I don't know about or some really just embracing black culture and the queen and the king this and blah, blah, blah. And when I Googled it, um, I definitely saw that the first thing that popped up was like Egyptian symbols and stuff. And um, I guess maybe it's connected to Egyptians being black. Maybe they had dreads back then. And of course, you know, Egyptian pharaohs and stuff, they were kings and queens. So maybe black people with dreadlocks today, they want to identify with that somewhere. And honey, pipe down. I mean, let, let's just be real. I love black hair. I do. I, I love I love an afro, honey. I don't care if you a 4C, D, E, F, G. I love me some black hair. I don't like dealing with it, but I love black hair. Now, and I, I, I would say that, yes, we are kings and queens. I, I would preferably use that for Christians, honestly. But um, you can tell some of these ladies, not trying to throw shade, but shade. Some of these ladies on YouTube who, are, who have these locks, they get so much pride in the fact that their locks have grown out and they're flourishing and they're beautiful. It's like they forcibly try to identify themselves with this ancient Egyptian, you know, um, belief or community. And you can see it. They try entirely too hard. Like, be yourself. Just because you have dreadlocks does not mean that you have to force yourself to look Egyptian. Just because everybody else around you has locks 
or your hair has gotten to a length where these people, you know, they've been growing them for years. You feel all of a sudden you just belong. I cannot stand desperate people. That's one thing that was really agitating me throughout this whole research. Like, I kept seeing that with these girls. And I'm like, it's either one or two things or both. There is an antichrist spirit. There's a spirit that's running a chain through all of these people or this this particular community. And that spirit is operating through y'all. And y'all don't know that because your discernment is shut off and you're blinded being unsaved. Or you're trying entirely too hard to be like these people just because you have dreadlocks. Pipe down. It's not the real you. This generation is just so sickening to me because nobody wants to be themselves. Everybody's always trying to identify with something different. I was doing that recently. I was just finding so many different fashions and styles. And, you know, you really have to be careful with that, what you're trying to identify yourself with. Because, number one, whatever you take interest in, whether you are aware of it or not, subconsciously, you are opening your spirit up to those things. There's a lot of different spirits running around in this world and a lot of different communities. And when you when you decide to identify yourself with uh, being a hippie or being a gypsy or being a, a, um, a queen or a king because you have dreadlocks, you know, what, what spirit are you really inviting by even letting that come out of your mouth? Are you opening up your mind and your spirit to things like that? That kind of influence, you are welcoming demonic spirits that is behind that community. And I, I just saw it on all those girls. And I'm just like, you know, people, they, people have no identity in this generation. They try so hard to be like everybody else. You, you there's, there's girls going natural. Let me big child. Let, let me rock the natural. Oh, okay. That's fine. You can embrace your natural hair. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I would encourage you to do so anyway. Because like I said, I'm not down with Negro peeing, you know? Um, I think I think straight hair is pretty, but it's just not us. It's not your hair. That's how I feel about stuff like that. But, I mean, even with the whole natural, um, you know, uh, bandwagon, you just saw so many girls, like, they just become so vain and prideful. And they, they it's like people, they're looking for something that they, I, they can identify with. And something that's going to make them feel like they belong. So if you have a fro, well, you're with the natural kinky girls. Oh, we're all just a family. We ain't no freaking family. I don't know you. You know, like, my family is the body of Christ. Just because I have an afro doesn't mean I'm going to be calling myself a soul sister. You know, like, what is it with that stuff? I know y'all know what I'm talking about. That is so annoying to me because you can just tell that it's like a, it's a defense mechanism. Like, it's a cover-up. These people do not know who they are. And they're trying so hard to identify with something that they have no clue about. And that you find yourself being arrested and um, being, you know, uh, yoked with these un these familiar spirits that's connected to this Egyptian crap. But you didn't take the time out to research it and study it. What am I getting myself into when I embrace this particular hairstyle? What am I getting myself into by opening myself up to all these different YouTube gurus and these locticians and hairstyles and stuff. And I, you just want to belong so bad just because you have an afro, just because you have dreadlocks. You want to belong that bad that you would yoke yourself with that familiar spirit that's operating through this entire corporation of people who are spiritually blinded. It's disgusting. I consider it a spiritual orgy. It's nasty. And that's exactly what the Lord told me about it. It's a spiritual orgy orgy anytime you see a demonic spirit that's corporately operating through people like that and it, you can literally see it's obviously a community obviously why are dreadlocks a spiritual dread they no sense to me i saw i saw girls with locks on youtube saying how well i'm really embracing my spiritual dread honey it's your hair is matted up how is that a spiritual journey are you really going to be this desperate? Do you really want to belong that bad that you would cause some matted up hair in your head, a spiritual journey? Something is wrong with you. You need to go soul search and find yourself. As a matter of fact, go seek the Lord Jesus Christ so that you can become one with him and not these familiar spirits running around on this earth. And then you'll find your true identity so you won't have to yoke yourself every nine months or every two or three years with all these different identities and these spirits. And once you become one with that spirit, honey, it's hard to get out. You're going to need deliverance. And I'm just like, spiritual journey. Could you have dreads? Are you, what, I was, what are they talking about? I literally was watching because I, I, I just started learning about dreads. So I'm like, what, what are they talking about a spiritual journey? That kind of put me at like a little halt. <laughs> you know, like, what, what, what spirit is, is, are you, how, how are you 
what higher consciousness and this, this, and that is connected to you getting dreads? I would like to know. So um, that's what it is. It, it definitely is a corporate demonic spirit that's running around this earth through, the, through those women and not just community in general. But the other half of it is these girls are just trying way too hard, you know. And I, I'm really, I'm really cutthroat. I honestly wanted to comment on their Instagram pictures and YouTube channels and actually tell them that, but that's rude. And you know, you, you need to be led by the spirit with what you say and how you say it and who you say it to. And I really just want to tell them, girls, straight up, you are so fake. You're trying too hard. It's because you have dreads. Not mean that you have to dress yourself like a freaking Egyptian. You don't even know squat, diddly squat about Egyptians and what they used to represent. But you want to make yourself look like one that bad just because you have dreadlocks. It's just matted up hair on your head. Congratulations. You have a long-term protective hairstyle. Why do you feel you're obligated to identify yourself with something you have no knowledge about? It's very desperate. I, I think I think it makes it worse for people who are clearly trying to identify with something. Like it's like you can tell when people are seeking out an identity because it's it makes them look that much more desperate. I don't know who I am, so let me put all this makeup on my face. I don't know who I am, so let me get locked so I can be a part of the lock community and the soul system. Let me cut my hair in big chop because oh my god, all of a sudden I've been wearing perm hair for years, but all of a sudden let me big chop and cut my hair. So that I can represent the black soul. So I'm a soul sister now. Do you even know what a soul sister is? Like, shut up. Like, pipe down. Are you serious right now? This generation is just like being raped by Satan in so many different ways. These people do not know who they are. They're digging and they're searching for something, but you're only going to find it in Christ. Not the world. Surely not the world. Part two. So obviously, I was trying to suppress the fact that this is way bigger and way deeper, Brandy, than you just having some protective hairstyle because you don't want to deal with your nappy head. So, as I'm looking up the research and I clearly I'm reading the different origins because they, they tell you, if you look up the history of dreadlocks, they talk about different origins. Like some are going to say Rastafarian started, which is not true because it goes back way further than Rastafarians. And um, then there's the Egyptian aspect of it and... um. The Hotep guy, I think Hotep, I forgot, I forgot what it said. I don't know if that was a pharaoh or some, just something else. As soon as I saw Egypt, I was like, mm. Egypt don't represent nothing good. Read the Bible. Anything, anytime God talked about Egypt, it was always negative. They were pagans. They worshipped demons. Anything that originates from Egypt, I would be weary of, and I would really seek the Lord about it. Specifically, Egypt. Honestly, be led by the Holy Spirit. Because uh, legalism is not the Holy Spirit. Rules and regulations are not the Holy Spirit. You really have to be. He's the one who can really go deep and teach you the spiritual significance behind what you're interested in. And what you're deciding to yoke yourself with. This is why I tell people when they ask me questions about nail polish. I say, look. Even, you know, there's a lot of things that came from Egypt. Like face masks. You know, that's why I say there's a, there's a thin line between legalism and then there is, you know, truth. I would say, let the Holy Spirit. He is a spirit. He sees everything spiritual. He knows what demonic spirits, I mean, that's just their realm. The Lord knows what demonic entities are responsible for, what they may have, um, what they may have invented, you know, that, uh, we now embrace in this generation and, uh, in the natural realm. So the Holy Spirit is really the only one who can give you the actual wisdom and knowledge and understanding on that particular thing. So I tell people all the time, you go ask the Lord about that. Don't be so quick to listen to another Christian about it. Because another Christian is not your God, okay? God is your God. You go to Jesus Christ about that and you ask the Lord to tell you himself, Lord, is this wrong? Why is it wrong? Educate me, you know. So, um, by that time I just kind of concluded, okay, it's, it's clearly something spiritual that's going on with that. I mean, it's not a coincidence that all these women are really into this, like, uh, what would you even call it? This weird Egyptian, uh, black power soul crap 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 community i said okay some things look really innocent on the onset you know you would think that they're oh there's nothing wrong with a black woman embracing her crown or you know there's nothing wrong with embracing natural hair it is something wrong when people try to make it something way bigger than what it is people do that in church you do that period in the body of Christ period. It's like you you they start splitting up Christians and they start making all these different sects and um 
denominations and you know before you know it you got a whole freaking cult formed i mean that's just what happens you know it starts off very innocent uh, the 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 the, uh, the substance of uh, what it was created with could be very innocent. Like there's nothing wrong with embracing natural hair. There's nothing wrong with um, loving yourself as a black woman or a black male. Now, when people start going, you know, a little bit higher than that and talking about consciousness and higher consciousness and the the dreads and their hair give them power and they're kings and queens because the the ancient Egypt. Egypt Goodbye. That's enough. <laughs> it, it, it really, you know, it always used to trip me out about how um people, and some Christians do it too, but they may just be ignorant, spiritually ignorant. I've noticed that a lot of people, they're, like, they're really quick to like, you know, run to the ancient Egyptians because they were probably black. And um it's like they want to have some type of pride about it. They want to pride themselves about their identity. Once again, like I said, people are seeking identity. You know, they don't have one. So they're, they're trying to run to the past. They run to the occult. They run to all these different uh, branches of the occult to find themselves. You know, just because Egyptians may have been black does not mean that you want to conform yourself to what they used to do. Because if you read the Bible, I don't care if they were tar black. I don't even care if there was an Egyptian queen who looked just like me. As far as I'm concerned, she was a pagan deity worshiper. My Lord detested her. He does not like her. And he despised those people. Why would you want to pattern yourself after a community and a group of people who consulted with demonic spirits and worship pagan deities? Really ask yourself that. Once again, like I said, these people, this generation is so desperate. I really, it's not this generation. I think it's just been going on for years because the spirit of rejection is rampant in almost everybody throughout this earth. But you have so many people who are seeking identity. They'll go that far. They'll go as far as saying, oh, well, Pharaoh was black. The Egyptians were black. These are my brothers and my sisters. And we all got afros with picks sticking out. And black power. Let me get a pick from the beauty supply store with a black power. Hey, I, I have one of those, actually. So I know that they're real. Sorry, that was nasty. But they're actually real, so I saw them. But, you know, they really will go that far. And, you know, they start digging into the occult, you know. And um, it's a spirit. I really do believe that it's a demonic spirit that is literally leading this, these people to go dig up that type of information. You know, why should that even interest you? What what these ancient Egyptians used to do? You know, you want to identify yourself with uh, being black so much because, you know, and I, I, like I said, I can understand it, you know, because we, we're literally torn down. We really, really are. Um, you know, there's racism in the past. There's still, you know, little little specks of racism today. And, you know, people just don't. They don't, um, black people are not equivalent to, uh, to white people today. Honestly, I don't even care about all this stuff. I think stuff like that is really carnal. That does not interest me, and it really does not concern me. Um, what concerns me is that I have the Holy Spirit, that I'm a child of God. So I'm going to be rejected whether I was black, white, Mexican, or whatever, because it's not about the skin color, people. It's about the spirit. It's either the Antichrist spirit and the spirit of the world, or it's the Holy Spirit. So even if you were an Egyptian queen, honey, with your afro and your dreadlocks, Miss Cleopatra, even if you were tar black, even if you were Mexican or Rastafari or Rastafari, which was an actual guy, I didn't even know that. I was researching, like, <sighs> these people. But anyway, it does not matter. Because at the end of the day, it's the spirit of the world that is operating through these people. Whether you were black with a TWA or black with a big, juicy, voluptuous, thick, flowing afro, honey. The only way you could even be accepted into a community or a belief system like that is if that demonic spirit and principality behind it were to receive you. And for that principality to receive you into that community, you would not have to have the Holy Spirit. Or you would have to uh, not have the Holy Spirit. That's the only way. Because at the end of the day... This is Satan with all his multiple demon spirits under him, blinding these people and deceiving them and seducing them and drawing them into all of these different belief systems and all these different religions, you know, so he can at the end of the age make them all one through the mark of the beast and through the Antichrist system by the Antichrist spirit. You know how we are all one in Christ Jesus through the Holy Spirit? We're one family, we're one corporation. Well, that's exactly what the Antichrist spirit has done throughout this earth, through Hinduism, Buddhism, 
Egyptian crap, uh, all of this different stuff. I mean, just all, all of the religions in the world are going to be one. Isn't that what the presidents have been saying? They want a one world religion, don't they? Why do you think that that's even going to be possible? Why is it that a one world religion is possible bringing all religions together, but the Christians are going to be kicked out? It's because it was the Antichrist spirit from the beginning. But these people can't see that. They've been so blinded by the hippie movement. Oh my God, man. Peace, love, my brethren. Peace and love, bro. Peace and love, sis. Black power, sis. Oh my God, we are true queens and kings, bro. Sis. Because we have afros and dreadlocks. Oh my God, wouldn't it be amazing? Because I'm so blinded by all these demons and I don't know the Lord. And we could all just be one. And just be one big happy family. And we don't have to worry about nobody telling us. Oh, Mark of the Beast. Well, there's our answer, guys. <laughs> Sorry. It's the truth. <laughs> Let me ask you this. If all of these false gods were really real, if your Egyptian god, your pharaoh, your hotep, all these other crazy Egyptian pharaoh names, psych psychotic people who used to worship the devil back then, if all of these gods that you serve were really that singular, and they were really that holy, enough to be upheld to that degree, why would that God, if that God really, I'm, I'm asking you, that's your God that you serve, right? That's your religion. That's what you believe in. If your God was really about that life, why would your God be okay with you merging into an entirely different race or an entirely different community where you accepted other gods? If your God was really about that life, my God ain't about that life. My God says, you're going to serve me and love me. You're not going to put nobody else before me. So whose God is the real God? Obviously, it's Jesus Christ. It's not yours because your God is okay with you having a one world religion. Your God is okay with you uh, serving Buddhism. And your God is okay with you being a witch, but somehow accepting you're still, you're still tolerating other religions. That makes no sense. Sounds like one nasty big spiritual orgy to me. Sounds like your God is false. Sounds like you need to dig a little deeper with who you really serving. Sounds like you serving a demonic spirit because no true God who was really a singular God, not the real God, would be okay with you worshiping any other God. You can't be Hindu, but okay with Buddhists. It don't work like that. Your God is full of crap. That's exactly what he is. Is Hotep okay with you accepting Jesus Christ? Oh, he is? You know why? Because Hotep is a false God. That's why. You're serving demon principalities and demonic spirits. They're not real gods. They have many different sects of the Antichrist spirit to gather everybody else's one. You know what these demons do with the different religions? And I've noticed this. The only thing I could see, or the only reason I could see Satan creating multiple versions in different religions is so that he can appeal to different groups of people. You have to get the people somehow. You have to get the people to feel comfortable. You have to give them something that the people can identify themselves with. So what Satan does is he has several different religions for you. Oh, you don't want to be Buddhist? Okay, we have Hindu. Oh, you don't want Hindu? Well, check out this Egyptian stuff right here because it's just so mysterious and Egyptians have the real power. And you, Oh, you're insecure about being black in this world? Well, go to the Egyptians. You know, Satan got something for everybody. That's what I've noticed about him. When in reality, it's the same spirit behind all of these different religions, which would make sense. That's the only reason why all of these religions would be okay with all of them coming to be one. There is not one true God who would be okay with their servants serving another God. No. And people think that the Lord is mean. The Lord is not mean. He's just the real deal. If you want to know who the true God is, you seek Jesus Christ with your whole heart and you ask him to reveal himself to you and he will let you know who the real deal is. And he will expose all these false gods to you just like he did back in uh, back in Exodus when he sent Moses to deliver his people and he shut all them false gods down, didn't he? Them false gods couldn't help them Egyptians back then. And ain't that something? How you can read these these people, they're so warped in the mind. God forgive me. I mean, they, they truly are blinded. They don't know any better. So I'm not trying to shade them too much. But 
it really is it, it amazes me how the people who are really into that egyptian religion they acknowledge jesus as a prophet some of them do they'll acknowledge the lord and they'll quote the bible they'll they'll try to defend dreadlocks of the old samson had drill you don't know what samson had you don't know what samson had you really don't did you see samson you don't know if Samson had dreadlocks, honey. You don't know if he had hair all the way down to his feet. You don't know if Samson rocked a ponytail. You don't know what Samson hair looked like. But they will take all these scriptures from the Bible and be like, oh man, Nazarite this, long beard Nazarite. I'm such a Nazarite. I'm a black old oh, Moses was black. But who cares what Moses was? Even if Moses was black, clearly he was anti-Egyptian because he delivered God's people from the Egyptians. Did you read that part? Did you read the part about how all those Egyptian people died? Did you read how Pharaoh died at the hand of the Lord, the real God? Did you read how all of their false gods couldn't even help them? When all them plagues was hitting they behind, did you read that part, Egyptian lover? You didn't, did you? You serving the wrong God. Locusts, frogs, flies, water turning into blood, firstborn dying. Hail, livestock dying. The water marine spirits couldn't help them then, could they? So that goes along to show you who the real God is. And the real God is Jesus Christ. But I got off topic anyway. Let's get back to what I was talking about. So I'm researching and um, found that out. A branch of it is Rastafarian, then a branch is Egyptian, and basically it was just a whole bunch of occult occultic nonsense. And even after I read it, I still was trying to suppress it because I wanted to tell myself, I'm not getting locks for that reason. I don't want to identify myself with that community or that type of fashion or that type of lifestyle. I just want dreadlocks, Lord. But the Holy Spirit was convicting me the entire time. So at this point, I'm just going against my conscience because the Lord is clearly telling me something is up with this. Something is wrong. And no. So what I did was I wanted them so bad because I was being seduced by that spirit so strongly to just get those dreadlocks, honey. I reached out to Damien Walter on Instagram. Yes, went back to Instagram, was trying to reach out to Damien through his pictures and stuff. And I'm just trying to find out how much does Damien charge for starter locks? How much does Damien charge? Blah, blah, blah. Nobody could even answer me, which I thought was a sign in itself that it wasn't meant for me to get them because the Lord really wants you to have something. It ain't going to be that hard for you to get it. He could put the freaking fleece right before you if the Lord really wanted you to have it. The man that would be there on the ground. So I'm just digging hardcore, honey, for a loctician. I'm looking for Damien. Damien finally responds to me. And he just told me to call him. He told me to call him. And um, mind you, this is while the Lord was uh, having me research about locks and stuff. So I thought it was very funny how, like, simultaneously I was researching and uh, looking up reviews about people who have had personal experiences with Damien, and he's messaging me at the same time. So it was kind of like the Lord was using him to expose himself a little bit. Even though he wasn't saying anything bad to me, I just thought it was interesting how he started messaging me back when I was researching all that stuff. And um, I went to Damien's website. I couldn't find the price for the lux, and um. I wasn't really trying to pay attention to any symbols on Damien's uh, website or anything like that. I specifically was just looking for the price because I had already made up my mind. I'm getting these locks because I'm tired of this, bro. I'm tired. So the Lord, he just kept dealing with me. He would just not stop stirring up my spirit about those dreadlocks. And he really does not, the Lord does not like Damien Walter. I will tell you that. You're a Christian that subscribed to him, unsubscribed from that man. The Lord does not like him. I felt a strong disgust in my spirit when it came to that man via the Holy Spirit. He does not approve of him. He is abominable to him. And he does not like him. I mean, I'm sure for several reasons. I mean, Damien does mock the Lord a lot. He makes a lot of crude jokes on using the Lord's name in vain. And uh, just, just a lot of things that he does, especially someone who's not saved. It's not okay for you to be doing that. But um, it's just that he's just defiled, period. So at, at this point, it's, it's literally like the Holy Spirit researching through me. Because he was the one making me. I was trying to fight it. You know, he's making me click on the Google, looking up the information, just so I can uh, be accountable knowledge wise because you know the word says that you know to whom much is given much is required 
And then when the Lord was talking to the Pharisees, you know how Jesus said that, um, if I had not told you your sin, you wouldn't be guilty. But now that you know, and you say you have no sin, you are guilty. So there is a difference between, you know, um, sinning against the Lord in ignorance, which he may not hold you too, too much accountable for, but that doesn't change the consequences from you being yoked up with that thing. You're still going to experience negative effects and negative consequences for being yoked up with that. But um, if the Lord has specifically exposed certain knowledge and information to you about something, like you've already researched the origin of this thing and you just still choose to choose the devil, well, now you are held accountable and you will pay the price for that. So I'm looking, I go back to Damien's website and lo and behold, I mean, it was there the entire time. I guess I just wasn't trying to look for it uh, the first couple times that I was on his website. At the top of Damien's website, he has a uh, kind of like a slideshow picture thing going on where it's, it's a man with dreads. So he's showing you, you know, you know, I guess, I don't know if he actually did the man's dress, but it's a picture of a guy with dreads. And then it flashes back to this symbol. And I looked at the symbol. It was a cross with a circle at the top. And I didn't even know what it meant, but instantly when I saw it, I'm like, obviously, I already know this means something. I don't know if it's Egyptian, and I know I know it means something. And I'm just thinking, like, why for the life, like, why do y'all have to connect dreadlocks to all this Egyptian crap, you know? So I go to Google, and I look up cross with circle on top. Pops up, and it's called an Ankh, or it's A-N-K-H. And I look at it. Of course, it's Egyptian, and they, 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 I think it's supposed to, it, it represents a cross, but the circle is meant for, like, higher consciousness. It's something really warped, and he had that on his website, and um, I said to myself in my conscience, I said, now I see why the Lord is really fighting me against that man, because, I mean, most of the conviction and most of just the, the disgust, it wasn't just for the dreadlocks alone, but it was for that man um, I was really going against my conscience and just, you know, the Holy Spirit was really restricting me from within uh, going to him specifically for dreadlocks. And um, it was like I was just ignoring the fact that he cussed a lot, ignoring the fact that he was just a horrible. He's not professional at all. Horrible representative for anything that he mocks the Lord. You know, I was like, I really, really need these locks. And I was just ignoring it. And the Lord just kept telling me, no, 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 no. So then, um. He did. He led me to that and saw that symbol. I said, okay, I, I obviously can't go now. I, I can't just do my Lord like that. I'm not going to willingly go to a, a salon with a guy who's representing some Egyptian. I mean, you know, I mean, and you know, honestly, it's really not to disrespect those people because what people are blinded. If you do not have the Holy Spirit and you're not saved, even if you do have the Holy Spirit, you can still be blinded. But these people are sincerely blinded, and a lot of people don't even know that they're indirectly worshiping these spirits. You don't. You can be indirectly worshiping and giving, um, what do they call it? Um, that's a word for it. I'll just say honor. You're giving honor to all of these principalities that is over your specific culture. You're giving honor to these um, these principalities that's over this lifestyle that you've chosen to conform to. Or you're, you're embracing it a little bitty bit. It does not matter if you are embracing it 3% or 100%, honey. That spirit, you still welcome that spirit into your life regardless. So when I saw that on his website, I was just thinking, I can only imagine a big octopus demon spirit over that man's shop or just operating through him. And every just I could just imagine going to that salon and I mean that spirit just being in the atmosphere, honey, and people are vulnerable and subjecting themselves to that spirit through this man's service. I mean, that's just the reality. You need spiritual discernment to see things that way because that's just what it is. A lot of people do not want to get close to the Lord for that reason alone because they know that once they have their eyes open, it's going to be a lot of stuff that they, they just can't do no more. A lot of stuff you just can't wear no more because your eyes are open. There's a lot of demonic, defiling spirits behind a lot of the stuff that we embrace here in America. Not just in America, just worldwide, period. But I was thinking about that. You can look at the man and tell that he's defiled. I mean, they don't even take a rocket scientist. You will know them by their fruit. His mouth is filthy. 
And on top of that, he has a symbol, an Egyptian symbol on his website. And he's putting his hands in all these people's heads. Those poor people. And uh, honey, I mean, one thing the Holy Spirit told me, a little nugget, which is not that big. A lot of the reasons why a lot of people in salons make money is because that same spirit that's in them has transferred to the individual that they keep putting their hands in that person's head. And that person now has that spirit and that spirit has bound that person's will and is manipulating and constructing their will without them knowing because they're still spiritually blinded. And they just keep going back, giving them their money, giving them their money, giving them their money. But I mean, that's just the world, right? People don't even think about that. You're not going to think about it because it's spiritual. The Lord would have to open your eyes up to something like that. You may as well consider most people in shops witches because, I mean, it really is indirect witchcraft if you think about it. Transferring of spirits. You got a, you got a whole Bible scripture that tells you lay hands suddenly on no man, but you have an entire corporation and business where people are constantly putting their hands in your head. Are you crazy? If you're going to go, honey, you better bring your blessing. Or look, I, you ain't got to use your oil in my head. I got my own oil. It's anointed. Put your hand. Put, let me put some on your hands. Just rub all your hands in this oil. Then you can put your hands in my head. So there can be a blockage and a barrier. I mean, really, you may as well consider most salons a den of demons. Because that's what it is. You know? And, uh, you know, a lot of people, like, a lot of black women, they're made fun of because they spend so much money on getting hair weaves. But that's why. Because of that Jezebel spirit. That spirit is robbing you and subjecting you to a lifestyle of poverty because you have received that. You probably already had the Jezebel spirit or you're receiving it from somebody else that kept putting their hands in your head. And that spirit, that's, demons want so badly to be yoked together with their kind. So when you go to a salon, I mean, it's really no, no shocker that most of what goes on in a salon is gossip, vanity, superficiality, all of that crap. Jezebel, that is Jezebel's territory is a hair salon. I'm not trying to be legalistic and say don't ever go to a hair salon. Like I said, I tell everybody to be led by the Holy Spirit because that's liberty. It's liberty to be led by the Holy Spirit and not be bound by do's and don'ts. It's not what it's about. But I'm just saying that is the Jezebel spirit's territory. And once that spirit comes into you and starts morphing and molding your mind and your opinions and your will, that it's not even you that want to go back to the salon that bad. It's not you that want to go to, to the beauty supply store that bad. It's that freaking spirit in you that recognizes that same spirit that's in that other person. Just like that woman that I kept looking at on, um, on Instagram with her with her dreadlocks and stuff. Demons want to be yoked together with their kind. And you just keep going back and giving this person your money, giving them your money. You're spending six to eight hundred dollars on hair for what? It grows out of your head. That makes no sense. That is demonic. It's bondage. But you don't see demons, demons, you know, demons, they're bondage. You don't see it as bondage because it's glorified. It's always glorified, honey. The apple was glorified or the fruit. The forbidden fruit was glorified, made to, made to seem like something it was not. It was bondage from the beginning, which is why the Lord said, don't go, don't do it, don't eat of it. It's bondage. You will surely die if you eat it. What'd she do? She eat it anyway, because it was glorified. It's appealing to the eye. It's good for food. All of this stuff looks so good on the outside, but it kills you on the inside spiritually, and it yokes you together with all of these defiling spirits through all these people in these hair salons, and God knows where else they get their spirits from. You don't know what these people be doing at home. They're probably having orgies and sleeping with women, sleeping with men, and you got their hands in your head. And you go home to your babies and put your babies to bed, laying your hands. I mean, it's just disgusting. I mean, nobody really thinks about this stuff. This is, this is the reality of spirituality. You have to consider these things. People that you are friends with, people that you are in relationship. I know this has nothing to do with the video, but I pray before I made this video that the Holy Spirit just speaks through me. And that's exactly what he's doing. You have to consider people why the Lord tells you in his word to be careful who you yoke yourselves with. Do not befriend unbelievers. He tells you that for a reason. It's not that he hates the unbeliever. He does not hate the individual. They are they have demonic spirits and defiling familiar spirits. And all of these people that you choose to befriend, you're in their face 24-7 talking with them, 
They're constantly just projecting things into your mind. They're constantly speaking word curses over your life and they're gossiping about you or insulting you or gossiping about other people to you. Hugging them, kissing them. You have, some of you have gay friends and you, uh, some, I think people who have gay friends, something is wrong with you. That, that, that's just all. I mean, people, they try so hard to justify certain relationships. When the Lord makes it clear in his word, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. I don't have to go into detail about that. The word makes it clear. Be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. Period. Your spirit is so delicate and so sensitive. It, it, you know, it, it's really, really sad because just because you don't have knowledge and understanding about the spirit realm and how spirits work and how all of this stuff works, it does not mean that you're not going to be affected. You're still going to be affected. You probably didn't know that you could have sexually transmitted demons every time you fornicate with somebody, but it still affected you, didn't it? Now you're in bondage. Now you're scattered. You're fragmented. You have no identity. You don't know who you are. And you keep having dreams about this person. You cannot break away from this person because you had sex with them and now you have that same spirit in you that that person had in them and they put that spirit in you because you went against the Lord and his commandments and he told you to abstain from sexual sin but you didn't want to listen you did it anyway now not only are you yoked together with this person and once again it's not all about the person the person is just flesh the Lord puts strong emphasis on that. If he even tells you don't fool with somebody, it, it's connected to the individual too. But most of the reason, it's, it's mostly because it's a spirit involved somewhere. The word says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against demonic spirits and powers and principalities. Because you went against the Lord and you had sex with that disgusting person. And I'm not saying that they a hoe. I'm not saying that they're promiscuous. They're disgusting because of what they're yoked with that they have no clue about because their discernment is shut off because they do not know the Lord. You had sex with this person. Now you got a marine spirit. Now you have a Jezebel spirit flowing through you. Now you're in bondage to them and you can't even break away from the person. And you don't even know why. You think it's just normal. I mean, it's crazy. Trust to God, honey. If the Lord is telling you, do not talk to somebody. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Yeah, like I said, some of y'all have gay friends. It's beyond me why anybody would even have being in a relationship or a friendship with somebody who likes the same sex and you not even like that. So I, I say people who friends, y'all bear witness somewhere. That's that's all I'm going to say about that. Somewhere that person, because like I said, spirit recognizes spirit. No shade to the Christians out there because some of us still need deliverance. Like I said, I'll just keep it real. This is a raw, uncut video. Spirit recognizes spirit. If you are in a relationship with somebody or y'all are friends and you want to call yourself a best friend, you better check your freaking spirit because something is wrong with that. You may just, you may be a Christian. You may really love that person. But if there's still something within you and that something is a spirit, if there's still something within you that identifies with that person somewhere, I'm not saying that you're gay. I'm just saying something is very impure about that. That is a defiled relationship that the Lord does not approve of. And you need to do some soul searching. And you need to go into your prayer closet and ask the Lord, Lord, what is it in me that makes me identify with this so much to the point where I have to keep it around? That is impure. That's what the Lord showed me about all the, even though the whole loctician thing, you know, and I was asking the Lord, like, what is it, what is it within me that makes me bear witness with it that much? Something is wrong. Don't be ashamed. Go ask the Lord and he will show you. The truth will set you free. Everybody's so scared of truth, honey. The truth needs to get out. Don't be ashamed because you demonized. You got some spirits floating around that you want nobody to know about, honey, because you probably didn't even know they was there. Thank God the Holy Spirit revealed it to you. So it can get the heck on. Because God forbid that you get married with that spirit. And have sex with your spouse. And have babies. And you constantly touching your babies. And putting your hands on your babies. And kissing your babies. And this child is so vulnerable to the enemy. You constantly transferring spirits to all these different people. And objects like it's nasty. 
God has so much grace and mercy upon us. I mean, if the Lord was to show us what the spirit realm really looked like, what's really within us that we still need deliverance from, the things that we touch, the people and places that we go and that we, we, you know, we join ourselves to. It's nasty in the spirit. It looks like a big freaking orgy. That's what it looks like. It's disgusting. And this is why the Lord is so adamant about um, purity, holiness. Don't go here. Stay here. Don't talk to that person. Trust me. Stop asking me questions all the time and just trust me. A lot of us, um, it's always our logic and our reason versus the Holy Spirit. People find a way to philosophize and justify everything evil because they're yielding to their own logic. Logic will take you straight to hell. Do you hear me? Your logic and your own understanding, which the Lord tells you in Proverbs not to even lean unto, because you don't know anything. Logic cannot give you spiritual discernment. The way you think, you think it's okay. You're justifying within your own mind why it's okay. Philosophizing and trying to dissect everything. Logic can't give you spiritual discernment. Only the Holy Spirit can give you spiritual discernment. And nine times out of ten, your logic is flawed. Let the Holy Spirit reveal to you what is of him, what is not of him, and why it is not. And why you should not be yoked together with it. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are God's temple. He's not going to share his temple with idols. And he does not want his temple impure. Now our logic, for some reason, just cannot subject ourselves to it. We can't accept it because we don't want to. We want to look at things through logic. We want to look at things logically. Logically, it would make sense for me to get the dreads anyway because I just don't want to deal with my hair. Well, spiritually... There's a demonic principality behind the dress. And if you yoke yourself together with it, you're going to open up yourself to that disgusting, defiling spirit. And you're going to defile my temple at the end of the day. That's what it's about. It's not about your logic. It's not about your reason. It's not about your philosophy. It's about the truth. And only the truth can set people free. What is the spiritual truth behind these things? Allow, Ask the Lord to show you. Logic. Logic done took billions of people to hell and they still there burning, wishing that they had Holy Spirit discernment instead of their logic. People trust their own heart, their own nasty, defiled, disgusting, deceived heart over the Holy Spirit as if we know better. You don't know Jack Diddley squat. If you did, you wouldn't be perverted and defiled and need deliverance now. And you do. You want to get some logic, get some Holy Spirit logic. Because that's the only one that makes sense. Anything else contrary or outside of it is defiled and nasty. Preaching to myself as well, because all of this is coming. The Lord just told me this, taught me this actually through this entire experience. And this is just over the course of the past three days, like I said. We need to learn to just start trusting the Lord, trusting his word, trust his instruction. And one thing that Jesus told me recently when I was having Bible study when Dominique was here is that his commandments are not to take from us. His commandments are to protect us. His commandments are like a gate and a fence. He's trying to keep you in the grass with the lilies. And on the other side of that fence is a whole bunch of wolves that are waiting to tear you to shreds. It's going to destroy you. He doesn't want to see you destroyed. His commandments are there for a reason. To protect you. It's a spiritual guard. It's a spiritual barrier because the word of God is powerful. The word of God is alive and active. The word of God is spiritual. If you obey the word of God, it protects you from what you can't see spiritually. We always want to see and understand things. Love. We want to understand the word of God logically. He can grant you that if he wants to. He has no problem opening up his word to you. But for the most part, you have to understand there are spiritual boundaries here that we can't see because we're in the flesh. And unless you have the Holy Spirit, you're not going to be able to see it spiritually via discernment. 
God's people are called to walk by faith and not by sight. Because honestly, you can't see everything that you need to see via sight. And if the Lord were to show it to you, you'd probably go insane and be entered into a psych ward and probably die from fright. And you could really see all the spiritual defilement and spirits that you're yoked to in the spirit realm. The Lord got to break it down to you easily. He like with me, like he's teaching me about marine spirits right now, which is something that I need deliverance from. And a lot of people have, but I haven't been teaching y'all that because I'm still learning for myself. And um, it, it really is overwhelming. When the Lord told me that it was very overwhelming for me, I didn't know how to take it, even with the whole spirit husband thing. So it's a lot of things that the Lord may know that you're just not ready for just yet. And he has to slowly and gradually teach you that via the Holy Spirit and expose it to you in his timing because he knows uh, He knows when it's right. And he, he does it the right way. So um, it's a lot of things that you need to see spiritually when it comes to what you choose to open up yourself in. Uh, open up yourself to it. What you choose to welcome, who you choose to welcome into your life affects your spirit. I really need you to understand that. Your logic is your enemy. Okay. Stop trusting logic. Stop trusting the way you think and the way you see things. You think it's the best way. It's not the best way because your logic does not have spiritual discernment. Okay. You need to trust the Lord. If your logic was good enough for you, then you wouldn't need the Holy Spirit. What does the Bible say about the Holy Spirit? He searches and knows the things of God. And he reveals it to us, his children. So the Holy Spirit can see things in the spirit that we cannot see unless the Lord reveals it to us and brings us in the spirit or um, through a vision or a dream or something. Because we're in the natural realm, we can learn how to protect ourselves in the natural. But when it comes to the spiritual realm, the only protection that you have to protect you from all of these different, you know, diverse spirits and all the stuff that's going on in this world that you really can't see is to stay within the confines of God's commandments and his holy word, which is the Bible. You may not always understand it logically. It may not all you may not always get a downloaded uh, revelation or understanding of the word and why, why, why. The Holy Spirit will give it to you over time. But for the most part, if you want to be protected and you want to stay within the, the right barrier in the spirit, which you can't see, you just submit yourself to the word of God. That's all you need to worry about. It's a relationship about trust and faith. And his word is enough. His word is sufficient, honey. Because there's some stuff out here, some nasty, defiled stuff out here. Some stuff I done seen and the Lord has revealed to me that are within me. I think it's just disgusting because things I may have yoked myself together with are people, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Ooh, I could tell y'all some stuff, child. If you want it, just let me know and I'll share it with you. But just, just some stuff, people that you welcome into your life, you know, you just want to get so close to and just booed up with, honey. You don't know what spirit this person got in them or what they're dealing with. Ask the Lord to reveal it to you. So anyway, I lost my place. Where was I at? I was talking about... um. Damien. Yes, Damien. Damien, Damien, Damien. Damien Walter. So that's what the Lord reveals to me about him. He was highly defiled. And um, I was reading Prepare for War, just trying to get some peace. Because, I mean, the, the Holy Spirit would just not leave me alone about the dreadlocks. I mean, my conscience was towed up from the flow up, honey. I honestly don't even see how Christians can live in rebellion because it's that tormenting to war against the Holy Spirit in your mind. Your conscience bears witness that something is wrong and you're fighting against that daily. Something is wrong with you. And honey, I, I turned the phone off. Honey, I started reading Prepare for War. I'm like, oh Lord, let me get some word in my spirit or something, you know, because I was just too like, dreads, dreads, locks, 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 locks. I gotta get the locks, gotta get the locks. <laughs> you know, I gotta get the locks. So I'm reading Prepare for War, and of course, Prepare for War is drenched with the Holy Spirit. So the Lord starts speaking to me through Prepare for War. And in the book, she's talking about scriptures around witchcraft. And the scripture in the Old Testament where it says how, um, There shall not be found among you anyone who causes his son or daughter to pass through the fire, which is child sacrifice. Here it goes. This is what the Lord revealed to me about Damien Walter. What he spoke to me anyway. 
there shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire which is the form of human sacrifice to satan or they use it to divination or an observer of times astrology or horoscopes or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer for all all that do these things are an abomination unto the lord and because of these abominations the lord thy god doth drive them out from before thee deuteronomy eighteen ten through 12. now when i'm reading it the lord once again he started stirring up my spirit and he told me this is about damien walter i said lord how is damien a witch I did discern some spirits on him, but the Lord was really just impressing it upon me that um, that scripture was specifically for Damien. So, honey child, I go back to look at Damien's website and a little cross, the Ankh symbol, and the Lord told me that's how he's a witch. He may not be engaging in witchcraft directly, but he's yoked himself together with a spirit that is connected to this community and these beliefs. And that is how he is a channel for that spirit via witchcraft. People operate in witchcraft daily and they don't even know it. Just because of what they're yoked with. The Lord told me straight up, I don't want you going to him. You're not going to him. And this is why. He is an abomination to me. I mean, a homosexual lifestyle in itself is an abomination to God. I mean, that's really enough for the Lord to just tell you, heck no. But he went a little step further. He's defiled. The Lord told, I mean, the feeling I had in my spirit towards Damien Walter, the Lord does not like that man. That, that I don't know what he's engaged in in his life or what he's yoked himself with, but the Lord does not like that man. He's extremely defiled. And even if I was to go in the salon and get my hair done by Damien Walter and maybe pray before I got my hair done, I think it's just the fact that the Lord just does not want his baby girl even in that atmosphere. I don't even want you there, period. I don't want you talking to him. I don't want his hands on I just, just know he's an abomination. The Lord don't want abominations of tampering with his temple. He don't want abominations in his temple, uh, talking to his temple. Abomination temple? No. Goodbye. Period. And I mean, when I read that and he explained that to me, now I began to understand why my spirit was so grieved when it came to Damien specifically, apart from the dreadlocks. He did not want me around him. So, um, another scripture that the Lord actually put in my spirit. I honestly actually forgot about this scripture that just goes to show I need to meditate on the word a lot more. But uh, the scripture that he put in my spirit for Damien was uh, Psalms 1 1, where it says, um, Blessed is the man who um, sits not in the seat of scorners or doesn't stand in the, um, the way of sinners and um, or not in the counsel of the wicked. Um, that's not word for word, but. Um, paraphrasing that's what that scripture says and i mean it just stood out to me and i said oh my god i can't believe i forgot about this scripture i mean it's it's so blatant and it's so direct you know blessed in the man is the man who does not sit in the seat of scorners or the scornful what do you do when you go to a hair salon you sitting in somebody's seat i mean how blunt can you i mean it's it's just the instruction is so clear when it comes to stuff like that and um Damien is a scorner. He's very, very scornful. If you watch his videos, all he does is mock Christ and he mocks his clients. The people who come into them or come into his shop to get uh, their hair done by him, he mocks them. He's very scornful. And um, I trust Psalms. I trust Proverbs. I just trust the word of God, period. And I feel like if the Lord is instructing me in that area where he says, blessed are you if you don't do this, that should be enough for me. And um, I wasn't thinking about that scripture. I wasn't looking it up. The Lord literally put that in my spirit after he um, spoke to me through prepare for war with uh, the scripture in Deuteronomy about not um, not uh, being in fellowship with anybody who's engaging in any type of uh, witchcraft. So that was just a wrap for me as far as Damien was concerned. I just completely cut him off 100%. Like I said, it disappointed me logically. 
I, I want to put strong emphasis on um, the difference between your logic and the Holy Spirit, because we all know that a lot of Christians still do it. They still find a way to uh, philosophize what's evil spiritually because they don't want to give it up. So, um, yeah, logically it upset me because I saw his work. I felt like he was a very, very good loctician. I just wanted locks that bad. But I mean, all of that is just crap. You know, that's just that just goes away with the wind or that's the chaff <laughs> in the wind as far as the Lord is concerned because the Lord don't care about your logic all the Lord cares about is the truth and holiness and um he was clearly revealing to me so he was just not even an option at that point and um this actually everything the Lord was revealing to me um about Damien and just the dreadlocks and the community that all of these people just seem to be involved in or, you know, relating with. It led me to go back to Instagram and to go look at that woman's uh, Instagram page who I was basically, um, I don't want to say I was idolizing her. It probably could have led to that. I just really, really love that woman's hair. And um, I couldn't see her pictures the same after that. I really could not. It was literally like the Holy Spirit just kind of... um. I guess you could just say I just started seeing with spiritual eyes, you know, so to speak, or, you know, like the Lord just kind of unveiled a part of my mind or something. And I was looking at her hair and I started to just see worms. I didn't see dreads anymore. I literally was just looking at her face and I was like her head and it was the Holy Spirit doing it. It was not me because I thought her hair was gorgeous. Like I was like, I want her hair. The Holy Spirit, he's revealing to me and like it was like he was allowing me to feel or allowing me to see what he saw and what God sees when he looks at stuff like this. And I could not help but just imagine mermaid hair. Or um, worms or snakes. I said her head looks like snakes. This is exactly what it looks like. And it wasn't beautiful to me anymore. And it really, it, it disturbed me, it really grieved my spirit because it was like I started to see past her beauty. I started to see past her um, enhancing the locks, so, you know, just the locks looking really good on her. And I started to just see the spirit that was behind it. It was a marine spirit. And the Lord told me that's exactly what it was. It was a marine spirit the entire time. She's demonically enhanced. Now, she may not know this. And um, I'm going through her pictures, which I've gone through her pictures several times. I actually screenshotted a lot of her pictures because I was going to use her pictures as a model for when I did get my locks done. And I'm going through all of her pictures and I'm my spirit, when I tell y'all, I was disgusted. Not with the lady, but the spirit behind those dreadlocks and the spirit that is operating through her, the spirit that she has yoked herself with. I began to see that instead of what my natural eye wanted to see, which is, you know, when it comes to the enemy, the enemy makes everything look appealing. But when the Lord uncovers that and he opens your eyes spiritually and you get to see, you, you get discernment, you get to see what the Lord sees in the spirit, it's not appealing anymore. It literally looked like snakes disgusting and i kept i kept getting mermaid in my spirit i kept getting marine spirit marine mermaid hair mermaid hair mermaid hair and that's all i kept seeing after that i couldn't even digest the thought of getting dreadlocks after that i'm so glad i'm close to the holy spirit <laughs> it, it was it was kind of agitating me it was frustrating my flesh and just my carnal mind because I really, really wanted to get dreadlocks. But I'm so glad that the Lord protected me from that and that he allowed me to see that far in the spirit as far as that stuff goes. I thank God for that. And lo and behold, I'm scrolling through her photos and I never, ever saw this photo. And she's doing yoga. I was like, well, I'll be dang. There it is right there. She was doing yoga in the picture. I had never seen that picture before, but she was doing yoga. And that was all the confirmation I needed. I unfollowed her. Actually, I actually actually made a, um, a little Instagram page because I deleted the other one along with Facebook 
only to find her picture so I could use it as a model. So I deleted that. Not, not even just her. It was, I think it was like five other women that I was subscribed to who had dreadlocks. And I was looking at their pictures too. And it was kind of just like an overview. It was like after the Holy Spirit had already, had already downloaded all this knowledge into me, it was an overview of just me looking at their pictures. And that's all I could see was just a defiled, not just a marine spirit, but just, you know, they're all a part of that same spirit. Whatever that spirit is, that's behind that particular community when it comes to those women who have those dreadlocks and they're just so obsessed with like, the black queen and your go we're kings and queens and we're blah, blah 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 that's all i started to see on them and most of them are vain anyway they get so vain over their hair they're all caked up in makeup i didn't want to be yoked to them for that reason alone but that i just unfollowed all of them it was only like six of them but i just unfollowed them i deleted all my screenshotted pictures out of my phone and i was just kind of sitting there just really letting it like marinate because <laughs> i was just like man this is so crazy but she was, she was doing yoga. And um, she did post Bible scriptures here and there on Instagram. But I mean, I knew she wasn't really a part of the Reddit. She just wasn't. I mean, you can just look at people and tell. It's not hard to identify your brother. And she's not. And the scriptures that she would post on her Instagram, they were scriptures about peace and love. So it, it seems like she's one of those people who go to the Bible um, and they take scriptures that would accommodate to the lifestyle they already live and you know this girl no no she's not saved and uh just the people that she followed once again um which is another reason i deleted instagram because instagram is the antichrist uh beast system as well but instagram is very defiling <laughs> i think you should delete instagram as well simply because pictures transfer spirits you have people who can take your picture, which I mean, honestly, you can't really do too, too much about it. Even though I did delete those things, anybody can still watch my videos and screenshot my face and try to do something with it. But pictures do transfer spirits and you are still yoking yourself together spiritually. I know you may think it's just it's just a social media network. It's just it's not a just nothing. It's period point blank spiritually. You're still yoking yourself together with these people and you are inviting whatever they have within them or that is attached to them in your life by following them, looking at their pictures and, you know, just go scrolling down. I mean, that that's what Instagram was really invented for. I just want to let you know that. Why would somebody create a, a social media network where all you do is post pictures all day? What is the purpose behind that? What do you think the purpose is behind that? Don't nobody really want to see nobody else's face that much. It's to make everyone become one with that same spirit. That's exactly what it's for. And I was so disappointed that the Lord told me I could not get those dreads. And I was still like, I remember I was still looking at her pictures like, man, like, I was trying to see the beauty in it again, but the Holy Spirit, it was too late. <laughs> like I had already started seeing that Marine spirit. I literally could not look at that woman's hair without thinking of like Medusa or, um, and that was not, that was not me. That was strictly the Holy Spirit doing that. Cause he was allowing me to see the reality of what that was. And, um, there was even a part of me I was trying to, you know, not justify, but just trying to, I guess, still at odds with the Lord a little bit. I'm like, well, Lord, you know, a lot of people wear dreads, you know, the people, the Bahama, Bahami, whatever you want to call them, people, the island people wear it. And the Holy Spirit's like, of course, people from the islands wear it. They're the main culture that's under a marine spirit. Why wouldn't they have dreadlocks? They probably have dreadlocks and don't even know why they're inspired or most of them wear them. It's because they all have a marine spirit. And that principality that's over all those island people, all you people who are Haitian and from the Bahamas and the Caribbean and stuff, do your research. Y'all need deliverance. Even if you've never 
actively engaged in witchcraft for yourself, your ancestors most likely did. And for some reason, I'm, I'm currently learning, it's like I, said, like I said for myself, I'm learning about marine spirits right now. This is what the Lord is teaching me right now, which is why I haven't been doing videos on it, because I don't want to give y'all like half information. I like to give y'all full information when I'm doing a video. But from what I've learned in the ebooks that I've read, you know, from Africans, people in Nigeria, bodies large bodies of water period they talk about the marine kingdom and how people who are from the islands that is the main principality that is over those particular people and those people are infested with marine spirits so no it's not a coincidence that somebody from the bahamas or the islands would have dreadlocks because that spirit that is inspiring that hairstyle. That's that spirit is what's behind those dreadlocks. Demons always try to manifest what they really look like through somebody. Have y'all noticed that? They want to be worshipped. They want to be idolized. They want to reign here. So they find a host body and they try to manifest their characteristics through that person. They try to manifest their nature what they look like, what they talk like, what they think like, that person will literally conform to the image of that demon. Just like Christians are here to conform to the image of Christ Jesus through the Holy Spirit. They pervert everything, and that's what demons do. So no, it's not a coincidence that somebody from the islands would have dreadlocks. Because that mermaid spirit and that marine spirit has a stronghold on that individual in that particular province. And they're inspired to wear that. But they don't know that. Maybe some of them probably do know. Some of them are actually willingly engaging in witchcraft. Voodoo. That's their culture. There, some of them are very proud of it. Some of them do it in secret. Some are proud of uh, the testimonies that I've watched on YouTube and the books that I've read. Some of them actually do know that they're worshiping water spirits. They know what they're doing. But I do believe that there's some people who are from the islands, they may be sincerely ignorant and they don't know. And because it's their culture, they probably don't see anything wrong with having dreadlocks or eating. There's a whole bunch of stuff that they do. They probably don't even know it's ritualistic and witchcraft. They probably just don't know. But if they get saved, the Holy Spirit will reveal it to them. Or he'll use somebody like me on a platform to tell you the truth about these things, especially if you are Caribbean and you're watching me. You need deliverance. Everybody needs deliverance, but especially those people. The stuff that the Lord has revealed to me about my husband and his bloodline, because my husband is Haitian. Just different encounters I've had with Haitian spirits by going into warfare for my husband. Y'all have some serious stuff in that culture. There's not one person from that type of, I don't want to like disrespect y'all because I really, I'm still like learning the difference. Like, you know, how people with Puerto Ricans don't like being called Mexican. Like to me, y'all the same, <laughs> you know, like y'all may be from different, like, you know, places, but I, I don't really know all the differences like that. I just know what the Lord teaches me and what he's shown me and the stuff that I've seen and it has experienced, you know, when it comes to warfare for my husband, the, the stuff that the Lord has shown me, y'all, I would just strongly advise you to ask the Holy Spirit to search your heart, search your spirit, search everything about you to reveal to you if there's anything in you that you need deliverance from because the marine spirits don't play. 
I literally couldn't even look at the, I, I just couldn't. I couldn't even look at their pictures anymore. I couldn't even just look at it without seeing a mermaid. And honestly, the Lord has taught me a lot about demonic spirits. And there's not one that has ever really scared me. But for some reason, marine spirits just creep me the heck out. I don't know if y'all watched my video I did in, uh, earlier this year in February when I was talking about how I was visited by a reptilian woman in my sleep. I did that video. And um, now that the Lord is teaching me about marine spirits, remember how I told y'all she had like a, a woman's head and body, but she had like a tail and I was describing to y'all what it looked like. Um, I may try to put that video link in the description uh, box, but that was a marine spirit. And ever since the Lord has just been teaching me this stuff and I'm just soaking it in, I'm not going to lie. I'm not scared of them. It just makes me extremely uncomfortable to know that something like that is yoked with me. You know, and I was even asking the Lord, you know, it made my head hurt to try to figure it out. But I'm like, how did something like that even get in me or, or you're attached to me? Whatever you want to call it. Various ways. I mean, from the ebook that I read, the guy even said, if you don't even bless your food, I mean, you can get it that way. People who have had that spirit, you may have been in fellowship with. I mean, you can get it various ways. I mean, I really don't even want to hurt my head, like, trying to figure that part out. Because, I mean, it's just a very, um, it's, just, it's, a, it's just disturbing. You know, you would think somebody from just island people would have a mermaid spirit. Not me. You know, how did I get that, you know? But the Lord is teaching me about it. And, um... I'm here to share it with y'all as well, because what I've learned about spirit husbands and spirit wives and marine spirits, you know, lately, um, I've learned that it's pretty global and it's actually general. And a lot of people have it and they just don't know. So I'm going to share it with you, especially when he teaches me a lot more about it. But um, that's all I kept seeing was like mermaid hair and just marine spirit and snakes. And I went to Google again, and I Googled again, history of dreadlocks. And there was this one link, I'm going to put it in the description box as well. I clicked on it, and I'm, I first per, the first picture I saw was Bob Marley. And I'm like, okay, typical. Right below Bob Marley's picture was a picture of the god or goddess Shiva with dreadlocks, and it was snakes. And I knew, I knew, I just felt in my spirit because it was the Holy Spirit that was leading me to continue just digging up information and research like he was the one doing it, like he wanted to show me. And I knew, I didn't know what I was going to see. I didn't know if I was going to see like a mermaid or something, but I knew I was going to see something on that link. And when I scrolled down, I saw that picture. It just did something to my spirit. Like, oh my God, that's what it is. It was like revelation through a picture. I have never even seen that God. At first, I thought it was Kali. I was like, I've never seen Kali with dreads. But it wasn't Kali. It was Shiva. The goddess Shiva. And I look it up. I kid you not. That dang thing has dreads. Snakes. Snake hair. Long dreads. I said, that's it. <laughs> that's it i mean at that point you just can't ignore it no more the holy spirit is just showing you like that clearly i mean you would really have to fight against your conscience hard and you really would just have to be like i just choose the devil after that one that ain't no coincidence and you you'll still have people who will try to justify it simply because number one they either they either don't want truth like that. They don't want spiritual discernment to that degree because they still have a stronghold on them when it comes to things like that. And they don't want to separate themselves from it. So there's those types of people. And then there's people who are just sincerely ignorant. Maybe the Lord hasn't revealed that information to them yet about cosmetics and about um, certain music and just, you know, hairstyles and stuff, you know, and that people say, well, the Lord don't care about that. The Lord actually does care. Why wouldn't he care if you're his temple? It doesn't make any sense. It's the truth. And then there's the category of people who just have their discernment shut off because they're not seeking the Lord. 
those are the people who you'll find trying to justify it and they'll say well they just wear it for this reason or the famous it's just a hard thing it depends on what your motive in it no it don't depend on your motive and intent of nothing what matters is like i said it's always logic and reason and philosophy versus the holy spirit anybody who talks like that they want to talk about what your it's about your heart motive it's about your intent or why you're wearing it okay well let me put a big old baphomet goat head uh thing on my head and a pentagram earring on and i'm dressing all black and i don't want y'all to tell me nothing because i'm gonna just look at you and tell you well that's not my heart motive for wearing it it's still evil regardless you wearing evil whether you're wearing it because you like it because it look good or whether you're wearing it because you're going to a fashion show or a party you're still wearing evil either way it goes it's evil Period. Now, unfortunately, that is the God honest truth via discernment and spiritual truth. This is what you cannot see in the spirit room, but this is what it is. A lot of the stuff that we see here manifested through clothing, through fashion, through hairstyles, through movies, through music, through dances. Don't get me started on dances. It's demonically inspired and enhanced. And there's nothing that you can do to change that. The only thing you can do is choose whether or not you want to yoke yourself together with that or not. But you cannot change the origin of it. You can't change whether it's evil or holy. I know you really want to because you want to do it that bad. But just go ahead and say that you just want to choose the devil. It's that simple. You want the devil. I'm not ready to remove myself from this it has a strong hold on me and i like it and i'm gonna fight against god i don't want to hear what you have to say about it because i want to stay stuck to these things that's all you gotta say that's all you have to say is that you're enslaved to the antichrist spirit and the spirit of the world and you're still stuck in the world and you're defiled with all of these spirits and everybody else who's defiled with it and that you're already marked and you're gonna take the work of the beast when it finally comes to be mandatory that's all you have to say you don't have to go as far as saying it's about a heart motive it's about your intent because it's really not about your heart motive your heart don't mean jack diddly squat your heart is defiled even if your motive even if you thought your heart motive was pure your heart is still defiled and that's what the word of god tells us so your heart should not even be a guide for you your heart is not a guide your motive is not a guide because the word of god says that um, the way that a man thinks, it may seem to him to be right, but the end is death. So you cannot trust your logic. You can't trust your reason. You can't trust your heart motive. You can't trust your heart's intent with wearing it and why you wanted it. Your heart intent don't mean nothing. You have to trust the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the guide for the believer because your heart, your logic, and your reason, once again, cannot give you spiritual discernment, can it? Can your heart see demons? No, your heart can't see demons. Your heart appeals to the projection of what is demonically inspired. And then you want it, you set out to get it, and then you get it and you defile yourself. That's what your heart does. Your heart is not a guide for you. The Holy Spirit is your guide. <sighs> so, um... And I was cringing. I don't even know if, like, I don't know if it was an actual link that I was reading or if it was a video. It was probably a link. It wasn't a video. When I was really just researching, like, the history behind dreadlocks, they were talking about how um, they did bring up the, it was different links. They just kept saying the same thing over again, how it originated from Rastafari and Rastafarians. And, um, of course, there's the Egyptian thing. And then they started bringing up how, how uh, the Bahamas, how island people, you know, they, I'm like, and every time I kept seeing Bahamas and island, 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 I kept thinking about that dream where I was on an island, island, island. And I just kept thinking marine spirit, marine spirit, marine spirit. That's all I could think about. And it was just like tons of confirmation on top of confirmation on top of confirmation that brandy this is clearly a marine spirit behind this hairstyle there's no way you can try to find a loophole around it or it's demonically inspired period point blank you know and of course i mean i'm not saying like i don't think like y'all because i mean we all have a carnal mind to some degree you choose whether you want to put on the mind of christ daily or whether you, or whether you want to operate under a carnal mind so i know i know exactly how y'all feel i know you don't want to give up your makeup i know you don't want to give up your weed and i know that every time the lord convicts you about these things you 
I was even praying. I was like, Lord, are you sure there's 100% no way I could lock my hair without mirroring or being some type of replica or representative of something that's demonic? Because I really wanted to lock my hair that bad simply because, well, not simply because, logically, I wanted to do it because I just didn't want to deal with my fro anymore. But spiritually, the Holy Spirit revealed to me that there was a spirit that was within me as well that was bearing witness with that and the demonic inspiration behind it. So it was not just... um. It wasn't just simple and logical. And a lot of people need to know that, which is why I'm making this video. You think that a lot of the stuff that you like and that you're drawn to and that you take interest in, or maybe even the people that you take interest in, you think it's just, it's so simple and it's just so innocent when really it's a demonic spirit behind that. That's not normal. And um, you really need the Holy Spirit to expose that to you and to reveal that to you. And you're blessed if you do have that. So, um, I found that picture, that snake hair, that goddess Shiva, and I was just like, man, oh man, oh man, these people have that stuff in their head, and they don't even know what it represents. That's literally that spirit manifesting itself through that individual. That's creep. When you really think about it like that, that's really disgusting. It's nasty. But demons, they work through the mind. They attach themselves to you and they come into you and they become one with you. And you start conforming to the nature and the, the characteristics and the likes of this spirit. And then now you're drawn to things, you know, that spirit recognizes itself in somebody else. And y'all just become one and y'all are just meshed together. And now y'all are a little community. It's disgusting. A whole bunch of defiled, condemned demons that their judgment is already set. Wicked spirits. They're all together and they're merging y'all together, merging you and all the other people who have that same spirit in them, merging y'all together, and now y'all are one. Making its way through your mind, constructing different thinking patterns for you. You don't even know the reason why you have a hunger and a thirst and a desire for these things because of that spirit that's in you. That nasty, defiled, wicked spirit that's in you. Now you got mermaid hair in your head. Worshipping dreadlocks. Uh, go look at it. Go look at the YouTubers. They worship their hair. That's odd in itself. Why are y'all putting that much, like, I mean, why, why is that so strong that you feel like you have power because you have dreadlocks? That's very unnatural. The fact that you worship your hair that much as if your hair itself is a god lets you know there's definitely a false god behind it. There's a spirit inspiring that hairstyle. That spirit gets its worship through dreadlocks. And you know, some of these pictures of Shiva and Kali, I think them demons probably do really look like that. And if you were to really see that with your real eye, you'd probably pass out and die. Because that's really disturbing. Go look at Kali. Kali has like, what, eight arms? The, the Shiva goddess has four feet. I mean, it's just a really disgusting, disturbing image. I know that um, a lot of them are symbolic, but I really wouldn't be surprised if those demon spirits actually look like that. And that's how they get their worship. They get their worship through you. They manifest how they look through you. Look at people who are tatted up. Google people who have tattoos all over their faces, all over their arms. I mean, because that, that's, that's also a branch of the mark of the beast as well. The Holy Spirit told me that when I was making my Facebook video. I just didn't say it in the video because it was kind of just a little off from the Facebook subject. But tattoos are a branch of the mark of the beast. You're marked in your mind. Tattoos are just a manifestation of how you're already marked in your mind. Why else would you mark your body? I mean, let's just be real. But if you look at those pictures on Google and you see these people, they look really, really disturbing. They look demonic. They start gauging their ears, big fat. I mean, it's just sick stuff that people do to themselves and they don't realize that it's a demonic spirit that's drawing them and driving them to do these things to their bodies. Piercings. And if y'all notice, I took my earrings out. <laughs> I did. I had got my ears pierced when I was working at that job. And the Holy Spirit made me take them out. But piercings and tattoos and just, you know, that spirit, 
I mean, when you really just subject yourself and succumb to those demonic influences, you begin to take on the form of that spirit. There's this one lady who has uh, dreadlocks. Her name is Quotidian Light. And I commented that on her video because I was watching an older video of um of her. She looked really, really natural. She had her dreadlocks and I was just listening to her speak as I was learning about starting locks and stuff. And she looked very decent. And um, I went to her channel to see if she had any more videos on dreadlocks. And her recent video, she looks very disturbing. The lady looks tormented. She has a nose piercing right here, right here, a piercing right here. I can't remember if she does or doesn't have uh, uh, the gauges, but her dreadlocks look like demon horns. I mean, the woman just looks, her eyes, she looks like just empty. And I probably shouldn't have done it, but I commented and I told it. I asked her sincerely, I said, are you tormented? Because if you are, I will pray for you. You look tormented. Sometimes some people, well, they may be tormented. They may just go ahead and tell you, yes, I am, but they don't know why. And I was hoping maybe it could be something like that. And I could email her. We could pray or whatever. She got defensive. And I mean, it's, it's that demon spirit. That demon spirit is, um, she probably knows what she's yoked with and she doesn't want to separate from it. I wouldn't be surprised if the lady practices witchcraft because she looks like an actual witch. She does. It's demonic. Why do you have two piercings in your nose and a pier What What is that? That's a demon manifesting itself through you. You are taking on the form of that spirit that's operating through you. That's disturbing. And these people, they're running around here just drained and stressed out and tormented and having all these weird dreams and visions. They don't even know what the dreams mean. Strange interests and just different doctrines and you know, different beliefs and stuff strange desires and you don't know where it's coming from but because you're so spiritually blinded and your discernment is shut off spiritually because you're not yoked together with the father through fellowship with jesus christ and the holy spirit you just eat it all up and these demons are literally consuming you swallowing you whole all of them she got defensive and told me i was being uneducated and i'm just being rude I was like, okay, well, you don't want the truth. I just, I just left her alone. And I couldn't even look at her face because it was just ridiculous. And she looks like she could be a decent looking woman. But when she did all that crap to her face, I was like, no. No. So, I'm glad that the Lord is teaching me all of this. It's actually very, very deep and profound. Um, I've just accepted that there's, there's just some stuff that you really just cannot change. You can't change the origin of things. Um, especially if the Holy Spirit is leading you to it and he's already convicted you on that thing. And he's the one feeding you that knowledge and information. And, um, if something is of God or if God approves of something, he will give you a peace about it in your spirit. But if you're going against your conscience and your conscience is really fighting you really hard on it, nine times out of 10, the Lord does not approve that thing. And he's just trying to protect you spiritually from it. But if you still choose to go against that, uh, that barrier and that restraint that's within you and you want to do it anyway, well, you make yourself vulnerable to a uh, demonic and satanic influence and you defile yourself. It's, it's really spiritual suicide. And, um, Damon Plant. I don't know if y'all watch Damon's channel, but Damon Plant, he's a brother in Christ. Damon actually used to have dreads, and Damon uh, said that the Holy Spirit led him to cut his dreads off, which I think, um, I think a, a year or two ago, I probably came to Damon about that, simply because I read something about, I think that was my, legal, my legalistic phase. I read something about men having long hair, and I came to Damon about that with the whole dread situation. I think shortly after, the Lord just really started dealing with him after uh, about it and he cut his dreads off they weren't really long or nothing he was just trying to grow them long they were like you know but he cut them off and now that i found all this information out it made me think maybe the lord made damon cut his dreads off because of this not because it was just about a man having long hair but i mean just the influence and the demonic inspiration behind dreadlocks period so damon is rocking a fade now and some other stuff I don't know, guy, hair, barber stuff. But, um, yeah, so no dreadlocks for me. And I have to get this information out to y'all. If you have dreadlocks, cut them off in the name of Jesus. Um, not because I told you to. Um, now that you have this knowledge, you're not responsible. I'm sorry. 
had to do you like that. But yeah, once you get knowledge, you're responsible and you're accountable for what you do after that. And um, seek the Holy Spirit about it. He will confirm it to you. And um, most likely, if you're obedient, he's going to lead you to cut it off. And um, uh, when I was fighting the Lord about it, I kept praying to him about it. I was just talking to him. You know, another uh, scripture that he put in my spirit is uh, abstain from all appearance of evil. So you have to think. And um, this is why I say you have to be led by the Holy Spirit with stuff. Because there is a fine line between the Holy Spirit and legalism. So I always tell people, just ask him first, ask the Holy Spirit and see what he says about it. But um, what he put in my spirit about that, as far as abstaining from all appearance of evil, even if I was to get dreadlocks after finding all that information out and I told people, well, I just I just got it because I just want my hair to be locked or I just want a long term protective style and I don't want to deal with my loose natural hair. Well, you have to think when people look at you. Which is true. People say there's a lot of dreadlock stereotypes and there are stereotypes, but they're stereotypes for a reason. Why are they there? That's another thing that people need to seek out. We're so quick to um say, oh, stereotype this. So that's a stereotype where everybody has dreads. I'm like, well, if somebody, if something is a stereotype, then there's a reason. There's a reason that somebody's going to look at you with dreads and, and think that you're a Rastafarian. Because obviously they probably know what it represents better than you do. And they're probably looking at you wondering why you don't know. Which is why they stereotype you as a Rastafarian. They know what it represents. And they wonder why it's in your head if you're not that. But even if, say, say I did get the dreadlocks, you know. And I told people that, that I had it for my own reason. Well, just the fact that me as a Christian, somebody would still identify me as being in the world because the majority of the world and the spirit of the world is what harbors or, you know, dreadlocks. The same as Christians who have piercings. A lot of Christians, they still have tongue piercings or nose piercings. And, you know, the word, that's that's what you would want to go to for instruction as far as that. The word says to abstain from all appearance of evil. You look like you're in the world. And the truth is, you kind of are, because if you still have something like that, then obviously, not only are you yoked together with the spirit of the world, but that spirit is manifesting itself through you because you went ahead and you decided to literally pierce yourself and mark yourself to prove that that spirit has a hold on you. The spirit of the world. That's why people look at Christians sideways and we have stuff like that. They're not being judgmental. They just have a little bit more wisdom. Which is funny because they're the foolish ones, right? You would think that we're the wise ones because we have the Holy Spirit. It's like they know better than we do. Why do you have your... That's the first thing my husband told me when I went to his house last year. I had my nose pierced. He told me he was surprised I had my nose pierced. You see how people can... I mean, it's just kind of... It's a common sense thing. Why would a Christian have a tattoo? Or why would a Christian be seeking to get a tattoo unless they were already marked in their mind? Why are you why do you have piercings? Why why are you seeking to get a piercing? Something's wrong with that. Even the world can see something's wrong with that. The world bears witness to Christ in their conscience and they don't even know him. To the point where when they look at you, they look at you sideways and wonder, well that's kind of odd. Why does a Christian have that? That's for us. Isn't that something? <laughs> it's crazy. And then we get mad at the world when the Lord uses them to convict us. They don't know what they're doing, but the Lord still uses them as vessels of dishonor to let us know that's not right. You should not have that. That's for us. Christians shouldn't be rocking that. That's our stuff. Some people will tell you straight up, I know I'm wicked, but you not. Why are you doing that? And they get disappointed because secretly they were hoping they were being inspired by you, honestly. Some type of light was being shown, you know, even though you may not be perfect, people may not always tell you that, but honestly, they, they look up to you. And when they see us do stuff like that, it kind of dampers our testimony a little bit. Now, dreadlocks, um, the most you would get from the world is um, probably the stereotype that's connected to dreadlocks. They probably don't know the spiritual significance behind them completely. So you probably just get, oh, why why did you choose to get dreads? Why dreads? You know, I, I would have seen that coming if I got dreads. I know my sister would have probably been the first one. Why you chose to get dreads? Just the way people look at them should tell you something. Why did you choose that? 
They're indirectly letting you know conscience wise. Well, that's not you. Why do you even have that? Why is it in your head? Why is it on your face? Why is it on your body? You're a Christian. Why did you choose that of all things? And honestly, the Lord is so funny because he's done it with me several times. Anytime I picked makeup back up or anytime um, I would get a nose piercing again or something, I kid you not. One of y'all would comment on my video and you didn't know what you were doing, but you would say something about it and I would get convicted through it. It's like the Lord uses different means and different people around you. They'll bring it up so he can kind of bring it to the surface. He's never going to leave you alone about that unless you just really chose to just be reprobate through that. And you really just kept suppressing the Holy Spirit's conviction. He would eventually turn you over to that demonic spirit. He would just stop revealing to you, period. And then you become reprobate, which is what you don't want. Because everybody who's reprobate is going to get the mark of the beast. So there's not even any peace in rebellion, period. I mean, in, in any form, in any form of rebellion, there's no peace. Because the Lord would just keep doing stuff like that to you until you took it off or took it out, honestly. That's just a God. Because you're his and he has a right to you and he can do what he wants to do with you. You're his temple. And um, it's what he likes and what he says, not what you want and what your logic says. And um, to sum all this up, this is another reason why I don't date. I don't believe in dating. I stopped believing in dating years ago. I only believe in God choosing your spouse. Even before I ever got any word of marriage, I believe in that. And um, I couldn't at this point anyway, even though I already know who my husband is. And um. I just honestly, I, there used to be a time where I could look at other brothers in the Lord like, man, he is so attractive. Man, he's so handsome. You know, I would imagine like maybe that's my husband. You know, I was a little, I wasn't a babe, but I was still carnal, you know, a little bit. I can't even look at people that way anymore because of all the stuff that the Lord has taught me about spirits and how when you look at somebody like that, like I said, spirits can transfer through pictures. You know, just me looking upon somebody like that. Not only is it just out of order, period, because if that's not your God-ordained spouse, what are you even looking at that person like that for? The word says, look at your sister like a sister. Look at your, look at that male Christian as a brother. That's what the word of God says. We're a family. So it's not even a spiritual mindset or the mind of Christ to even be attracted to someone in that manner. And if you are, that's demonic or your heart needs to be purged. We look at each other as family, but I can't even look at men like that anymore because Number one, the Lord has just been purging my heart from even looking at people like that. And number two, just um, the spirits. Like, if, let's say I was to date, let's say I started dating right now. Just the fact that I would, just me pursuing that type of relationship with somebody, I now have spiritual understanding that me, I would be merging and mixing my spirit with this person. Outside of God's will and outside of God's ordination, because he didn't tell me that person was my husband to begin with. So what the heck do you think you're doing? That's out of order. And it's tacky for a Christian. A lot of Christians run around here dating who they want to date. You look nasty. And I'm going to just be honest with you. A lot of y'all message me saying you got boyfriends and girlfriends. And the first thing I tell you, break up with them. Did the Lord tell you that was your husband? Did the Lord tell you that was your wife? Then why are you dating them? Where's it, it's, where's it supposed to go? Neverland? It's not going to go anywhere. You're not going to marry them. So why are you in a relationship with them? Is that God's will? Did God tell you that that person was your spouse? Break up with them. Ask the Lord, is this the man or the woman that you want me to be with? If he says no, cut it off. Because this is serious business here. When it comes to mixing with people's spirits and spirits that they have attached to them. It's not a game. So even if I wanted to, if even if I wanted to date right now, I would not do it for that reason alone. Not just because God hasn't sent me my husband yet, or you know, God didn't tell me that person was my spouse. I now understand on a higher level and higher consciousness spiritually how disgusting it would be if I was to take it upon myself outside of God's leading to go pursue a romantic relationship like that with somebody I don't even know. Spiritually speaking, I'm merging myself with you. It is, in a sense, it's like spiritual intercourse. It's out of order. It is tacky. Believers should not be choosing their own spouses. And I don't care what no other Christian or pastor tell you. That's nasty. 
And don't try to say that uh, you have liberty in the Holy Spirit to date because you ain't got no liberty in the Holy Spirit to date. You belong to the Father now. You are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit. He chooses your spouse for you. You deny yourself. Your life is not your own no more. If he wants you to be, if he wants you to be married, he's going to choose who he wants you to marry, not you. Because there's a lot of different elements and technicalities to when it comes to putting somebody together and mixing somebody and making them one with somebody else. You really, you really take time to think, to think about that. That's what you do when you're dating. You are opening your spirit up to this person in that manner. And spirits can recognize that. You're not only inviting that person in your life through a dating romantic relationship as a Christian. You're inviting that spirit that they got with them. And that's nasty. Even if y'all never have physical intercourse or fornication in the natural, you're doing it in the spiritual because you are lying. The Lord did not tell you to go in that direction. So what are you doing? I'm going to tell y'all why in the next video. Perfect example. I have a brother in Christ who I just recently cut off again for the hundredth time. This brother in Christ, um, very sweet guy. Holy Spirit. I mean, he's a brother. I ain't got to get into too much detail. But I've only had one dream about him from the Lord that was him in a good lighting only one all the others the god was either exposing something that he was doing towards me in the dream or he was exposing something to me about that guy and let me tell you this i recently had a dream about this brother in christ and i would be on the phone with him we talking honey joking you know just fellowship as friends brothers and sisters and stuff we'd be on the phone talking all the time texting all the time and i had a dream about this brother in christ recently it was very, very vivid. It felt very realistic. And um, I was in my restroom and this brother in Christ was coming on to me sexually and he groped me from behind and he was about to have sex with me. I mean, just like how a guy would, um, you know how guys like how they really aggressive with females when they about to have sex and stuff. Well, that's what my brother in Christ was doing to me in the dream. And I never thought about him that way ever in my life. So that's not why I had it. Honestly, it wasn't really a dream. It felt like it was just done in the spirit. And, um, Connected to that, it was something about him being exposed in the dream as a witch. Now, that could be symbolic. I don't think that he's an actual witch. If he is, the Holy Spirit would probably have to reveal a little bit of further. But, you know, like I said, witchcraft is also manipulation. And that guy is very, very manipulative. He plays off of your emotions. And I told him this recently. I said he really needs to seek the Lord about it. He needs to get deliverance from it because he has a deluded superiority over the females that he talks to in his life. Whether it's an ex-girlfriend or a sister in Christ. And I know because he's done it with me. And I can discern that. And I've told him several times, I don't see you like that. It's kind of delusional in a sense. I say he's very clingy. I don't like clingy dudes. I don't like stuff like that. And the only reason I kept like accepting him back is because he genuinely is a really cool brother in Christ. Like I'm not even trying to shade him at all, but I couldn't help like, why does the Lord keep showing me stuff like this about you in dreams? Why am I dreaming about you trying to have sex with me and groping me in the dream? And I told him, I told him all the details of the dream and everything because we were friends. And um, me and him both bore witness that obviously it's a spirit that's connected to him that probably gave me that dream. Now, what does that tell me? That should send a light bulb off immediately. Why is there a spirit that's connected to this guy giving you dreams about him trying to have sex with you? Which he later on admitted to me that he did used to have thoughts like that about me, which I guess I was just, I was trying to be understanding with it because I'm like, okay, well, at least he's being honest. Most guys would hide something like that, especially if they're really trying to deceive you or trying to have um, ulterior motives to towards you. But he did tell me that, and I was just like, well, you know, you know what you're dealing with. You know, you need deliverance. And um, it's a spirit this. Most likely it's a spirit wife, blah, 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 lust, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I shared that with y'all just to show how this is somebody I was on the phone with a lot. Not every day, but we would talk often. If we weren't talking on the phone, we were texting. And it just goes to show you I've never met this guy in, in, in real life. I've never met him in the flesh. But you see how you opening your spirit up to somebody and talking to them like that and being close to them and y'all kind of form a bond. 
This is how soul ties are formed. And a lot of people don't know this. That's why I have um, I have a soul ties playlist in the videos that I did. The Holy Spirit taught me that you can form a soul tie just from you opening your spirit up to certain people. You don't have to have sex with them. Now, I'm not saying that me and that brother in Christ have a soul tie because I don't believe we do. What I think it was is because um, when you do open up yourself like that, because I would say we got pretty close, you know, we would share a lot of secrets and stuff with each other. You know, he has a word of marriage as well. So we used to talk about, I talk about my husband with him. He talks about his wife with me. So we did form a bond. But what happens when you form a bond with somebody like that? And I actually read an article uh, recently before I deleted my Facebook page, a sister in Christ. She shared this article with me and it's a Christian article just pretty much saying why Christians should not have relationships with the opposite sex like that. And it really just uh, went on to explain how certain relationships and just certain bonds like that are specifically meant for your spouse. And um, I kind of was, you know, when I was reading, I was like, well, I mean, are you saying we just can't have friends, you know, like, because it does seem like, well, that kind of sucks, you know, because I always wanted a brother. I don't have any brothers. I just have sisters and the sisters that I do have, I'm not even close to. So it actually gave me personal comfort, especially since I'm not even in communication with my husband right now. It makes me feel good to talk to the opposite sex. And sometimes I just get tired of talking to females all the time. And I feel like talking to a man gives me like a certain type of feel, you know, it's not always cattiness. It's not always falling out over stupid stuff, you know. I like that feeling of having a brother. So I was kind of like looking at the article a little sideways, like, well, it's basically saying we probably shouldn't be friends with the opposite sex because of what it could lead to. And even if it doesn't lead to anything sexual, you're still the way the way that you open yourself up to somebody who's the opposite sex. That way you should only be intimate in that way, even if it's you sharing your darkest secrets and y'all just getting really, 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 really close. That is preserved for your husband and your wife only. Because what's going to happen is. Y'all have formed a bond already, and y'all already tight, possibly have a soul tie. Not all soul ties are bad. There, could, there are some good soul ties, but y'all formed a soul tie now. What's going to happen when you get married? Your wife and your husband ain't going to like that. And if there is a wife and a husband who's okay with that, look, honey, I mean, to each his own. I, I'm personally not down with it. I had already decided that when I get married, I was going to cut off certain brothers in Christ anyway. Not cut off like, oh, I'm never going to talk to you again, but I wasn't planning on being close to them like that because I just feel like it's, just, it's disrespectful to my husband. You know, all the stuff that I was giving you, I see it as kind of like, okay, well, you're here as a substitute for, for what my husband could be giving me or would be giving me if we were married. So to me, you're a brother, you are a friend, you are a confidant, you know, but that's all the things that my husband is to me as well. So of course, when he comes back, I'm not, I don't plan on having that close relationship with you like I did before, because that's preserved for him only. So in that sense, the article, it did make sense in that, in that light, because you do open up your spirit to people, you know, um, and when you, open or when you give an invitation like that to somebody like i said it's not just that person that you're welcoming into your soul it's the spirit that comes with them as well and this is how soul ties are formed demonic soul ties demons can construct and uh, orchestrate soul ties between people and um it just it just really not be of god you know and when you really think about it that way, you know, that, that type of relationship, just the intimacy that goes into something like that, it may seem innocent on the onset because you may never even have a thought like that in your life about that person in a sexual way. Or you may even not ever see them as in a dating sense, but you've been spending all this time with that person and y'all are flirting or if y'all are not flirting, y'all just getting really, really close. And sometimes a lot of friend, a lot of relationships happen between friendships simply because that man and that woman, you cannot deny everybody is seeking companionship. And what you're seeking, you're getting it from that friend. And that's what creates the soul tie. When honestly, that's preserved for your husband and your wife alone. That's not meant to be given to that dude or that female like that. And the Lord does not like that. I pray in the name of Jesus that God savors every relationship like that because you are unknowingly yoking yourself and creating a soul tie with that person, even though it may not really seem impure, 
But that showed me from all the times that I was talking to that guy on the phone, talking to that brother in Christ and texting him all the time, with us getting really close and just telling each other personal stuff, which I did enjoy. Because like I said, um, I do miss my husband and the things that I wish I could talk to my husband about. I don't have him here with me now, obviously. So I have brothers in Christ that I do talk to and I would just talk to them. But obviously me experiencing that or having that dream about him, that was not a coincidence. And what I think it was, was, and I told him about it. I told him what the dream was and everything. And he even told me himself out of his own mouth that it was a spirit, obviously, that's connected to him. So the only way that something like that could invade my dream life or my spirit is if I already opened myself up to him through having a close-knit relationship with him and relationship with him in the spirit for something like that to come and violate me that way. That sounds like somebody that needs to go. Okay. And I've experienced this with a lot of different people. Um, I've had several relationships, man, where just just with the brethren and the faith, and it would start off really, really good. And it's not that it's a bad relationship, but you have to understand that the spirits that people care, uh, carry with them, we are a carrier for different types of spirits that we still need deliverance from. And I went through that with a couple people where I would have strange dreams and strange visions with them, you know, and we would talk about it, you know, but obviously it was because that person was dealing with a spirit, whether it's a spirit of lust or a spirit of a perversion of, of some sort, something that that person is dealing with, because you opened yourself up to that person to that degree through a friendship to that level, that spirit was welcome to you as well. And we have to be very, very careful with that. So not only do you have to, um, you have to look out to not, um, yoke yourself with unbelievers, but even your own brothers and sisters in Christ. Seek the Lord about those relationships. I do think that brother in Christ is, I mean, I think he is because he admitted it to me. We talked about it. He's definitely struggling with lust. And um, I know a lot of Christians think that we should just be able to talk to everybody in the body. Of, no, you can't talk to everybody in the body of Christ because there are some brothers and sisters, they still dealing with some stuff. And um, especially men who struggle with lust or sisters in Christ who struggle with lust. Why would you want to yoke yourself together with somebody like that? Because that spirit is still on them. And until they get deliverance, they're going to be looking at you a certain way. Especially if they're humble enough to admit it to you. You should you should pray about it at that point. As soon as somebody tells you something like that is no. And especially you know, with friendships, you know, intimacy comes with friendships. So you have to think, you know, you're struggling with this and I respect you as a brother, as a sister, and I love you. I'm going to pray for you. You know, it should be that. But you're basically letting me know that if I was to open up myself to you for us to get closer, that that spirit could potentially come and try to, you know, cross some boundaries with me. So if somebody admits that to you, the first thing you need to do, go to the father, consult with him, ask him what you should do about that relationship and about that friendship because that person is struggling with lust. So your own spirit and your own well-being is at risk, spiritually speaking. Nothing against the brother or the sister in Christ. It's nothing like that. But the spirit that they're dealing with is not something that you want to be yoked with or that you want to merge with spiritually. So um, I've experienced this, like I said, a couple of times. And what I've learned is that that person could sincerely have the Holy Spirit. But the thing is, if it doesn't balance out or if it's, um, if there's some type of perversion already there, it is just wise for the both of you, actually, not just you, but for that person as well to cut that relationship off. You don't have to do it in an ugly way. You don't have to be rude. You know, it's just... God showed me this, this, and this. I prayed about this relationship and the Lord, I feel like the Lord is leading me to do this. And um, I mean, like I said, it's really nothing against the person. It's just, you know, the Lord is very understanding. There's been several times where the Lord has given me dreams exposing mm -hmm. how a brother or a sister in the Lord feels about me in their heart. The Lord will show me that. So it's not like God just despises or has like some type of contempt towards his children. He's not going to do that to you. Um, if the Lord exposes anything about you to somebody, it's either for them to A, pray for you, or B, um, he's letting you know for your own well-being and for your wisdom what this person is dealing with. And you can decide what you want to do with that information. 
Now, if you still choose to be friends with that person, knowing that you could potentially develop an ungodly soul tie with them and deal, you know, taking all their demonic garbage and stuff through that soul tie, well, that's you. I think it's a foolish decision, but that's still your choice. But if you do choose to take what the Lord has shown you through that dream or what you've discerned or what you've, um, the vision or whatever you want to call it, you know, you just walk away. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. It's not going to make the person feel like crap. And if it does, well, you know, too bad. Okay. <laughs> you know, you got to think with a spiritual mindset here. It just is what it is. Um, even in the body of Christ, you still have to be careful who you mix and merging and talking to just because somebody got the Holy Spirit. Don't mean Jack diddly squat. Okay. You can have the Holy Spirit to be completely defiled. It's the truth because the Holy Spirit is here to sanctify and to cleanse you and to purge you. You're not obligated to talk to every Christian. I'm not, and I don't talk to every Christian. So just ask the Lord. And he'll just show you what the person is dealing with. And I think it would be a wise decision. Nothing against the person or their well-being or their relationship with God. Because they probably are sincerely trying to come out. They probably just still need some deliverance. And the Lord's probably just saying, not right now. Just just, just cut it off right now. That shouldn't be, no, not right now. You know. <clears throat> because demons will try to interfere. And they'll try to take advantage of that relationship. Which is exactly what happened with me and their brother in Christ. And I had that dream. The Lord knows that those spirits will take advantage and he just doesn't think it's wise for his children to just be close like that right now. Not, you know, let y'all get clean first, get deliverance first, and then I'll, you know, y'all can be friends. I've had brothers in Christ that I've gotten close. To. I mean, cool cats, cool, like nothing wrong with the dude, but they'll just tell me straight up, sis, I'll be fantasizing about you. <laughs> But I mean, they'll 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 be honest and they'll tell me, well, I, I have looked at you in that way, Brandy, or I have thought that you were very beautiful and I struggle with this, this and that. And I try to ignore it because I think like, OK, it's natural in a sense, but at the same time, they kept bringing it up and bringing it up. And it's like, obviously, there's something there. And um, some of them I actually respect because they just kind of drew away from me when they felt that. They knew that that was there. So out of respect for me and they probably just knew it just wasn't good to keep talking to me like that. They just stopped talking to me. But I think it just goes to show how I would have to agree with that article that you probably should not be that intimate with the opposite sex in the faith just for wisdom's sake. I mean, the word of God will even tell you um don't listen to the to the pastor or listen to the shepherd, you know, don't have the shepherd giving you counsel. You go to another woman for that. You don't want to go to a, a male figure for that because certain things or you'll go to your husband, you know, the word tells you, you know, uh, you got questions. He told the women in the church, be quiet. If you have questions, go to your husband at home and you ask him because what's going to happen is. If you were to keep going to like a male figure, another male figure for all that knowledge and that wisdom and oh man, you know, or you feel like there's something that you're not getting at home from your other spouse or you feel like the pastor may know more, or the deacon may know more, y'all can still create this relationship. You're sharing, you're sharing all this personal information with this person. That's intimate. That's something that only, you know, it's very personal stuff. That's something only your spouse should know, but you're sharing it with this other person and y'all are creating a bond. You're beginning to trust them. Y'all are have a friendship now, apart from your marriage, by the way, even though it's pastor so-and-so and deacon so-and-so, it's still inappropriate because that bond and that intimacy is only meant and preserved for your spouse. And now, you know, you got adultery around the corner, which y'all probably didn't see it three blocks away couple hours ago but you know it got there because you have developed a bond and a soul tie with that person so i think it's just wisdom um it i could it kind of does suck in a way because like i said i always wanted a brother and um you know i don't have any brothers except brothers in christ but um I do see companionship. I'm not married right now. And just, I love the feeling of talking to a man, even a man's voice for me. It's just something very, very comforting about it. And that's the reason why you have to be very careful with friendships, with the opposite, all of that crap. I don't believe in that crap. Not to that degree anyway. You got to be careful with that. Especially if you're married. I most certainly don't agree with that. Even if it was a married couple that we was friends with, still treading lightly so yeah with me heck no it's not going down fyi just letting you know ahead of time i'm not i'm not down with all of that they're gonna go i'm your new best friend 
they can get deleted and removed and de- erased and go into neverwhere. They're not going to be here. That's my place. That's how I feel about that. And I feel the same way about my husband. When I get married, whatever friendships that I have with the opposite sex, I may still, I, I mean, honestly, I'm going to let my husband decide that, to be honest with you. Because I feel like there's just respect. Are you comfortable with me texting brother so-and-so? Brother so-and-so texts me, he want me to pray with him. Are you okay with that? Ask your spouse stuff like that. You have to. It's very, very serious. But um, that's all. I just wanted to give y'all an example of why I would not date. I don't believe in dating. I think it's disgusting. Um, If the Lord is telling me to be careful with my friendships, I mean, that's even worse. You trying to date some, eh, that's, that's an intimate thing. You don't play around with stuff like that. And Christians, they just doing it all over the place, looking nasty like the rest of the world. No, that's not okay. It's a carnal, sensual spirit. You you want to? Why would you want to look at somebody in that manner, another saint in that manner, and God's not even leading you in that direction? You take it upon yourself to date that person. A lot of Christians need rebuke when it comes to dating. I really wish there were more men of God or more pastors to tell people that dating is not of God. You should not be doing that. You shouldn't even be looking at other Christians like that. If the Lord wants you to be married, he'll reveal your spouse to you. And in time, he will bring y'all together. But until then, why why, why is that even in your heart towards your brother, your sister? Nobody really sits down to really think about stuff like that. That is nasty. You're married to Christ. Be single. Let your eye be single. Let your heart be single. Keep your spirit pure by being married to Christ until he's ready for you to be married to the person that he has for you. All the other stuff that's out, all that extra, no, extra nothing. Cut it off. Cut it off. It's like a sixth finger. Cut it off. Or dead ends. Or like that one strand that's just always like, just cut it off. That's inappropriate. And it's disrespectful to your spouse. Your future spouse. It's very disrespectful. So. That is all. I hope y'all enjoyed this long segment. Please comment all your goody comments. I just love it when y'all just go crazy over revelation and stuff. I just It's just so funny to me, especially since I was being goofy in these videos. So go ahead, honey. Post your commentary, your questions, etc., etc., etc. Yes. I really want to eat some pumpkin spice bagels with avocado. I've been eating it lately. It's actually very delicious. Y'all have a blessed night.